Hey everyone, good evening. I'm finally doing a live stream. Continue on with Metroid Month, even though it's June. <laughs> I'm very sorry, I've been super, super busy lately. I just got back from MegaCon this past week, and I've been super busy with work, and also I'm still recovering from a cold. Um, yeah, before I left for my trip to Orlando, I caught a cold, and I've had this massive cough, and I wasn't feeling really well. But uh, yeah, let me just let everybody know that we are going to be doing a live stream of our game for today. So, if you didn't join us last time, we played through Metroid Zero Mission, and apparently I looked through it and it was lagging, and I completely apologize. Hopefully it doesn't lag this time around because uh, it was raining a few hours ago. So, you know what that means. Rain means slowdown. So, yay. Okay, let me just post here. Currently doing... A live stream playing Metroid. Come join. Okay, I had just posted that on Twitter. Now let's see if I can post that on Facebook. Hopefully, because I've been having difficulties with Facebook lately. I don't know why, it just doesn't seem to let me post anything. Okay. So, with that said, let me just see if there's anybody in the chat, if, they got, if you guys want to talk. Or whatever. Okay, there's a currently, right now, there's two people watching. Hi, Captain Beast Mode, how's it going? Uh, yeah, it seems like you're the only one here so far. I guess we'll just wait for everybody else. So, um, while we're doing that, just waiting for about a minute, uh, you're probably wondering, where am I? This isn't my usual room. Well, um, i moved rooms since then. Uh, I'm in a much more smaller room because, um, ever since my dad got out of the hospital, he needs to have the bigger room now, which makes a lot of sense because at the time, my sister and I were sharing rooms, but now she's moved and... Now I have the smaller room, it's just that we didn't have enough strength and energy to, you know, switch things between my stuff and their stuff. So things are better then, and I redecorated the room, uh, and uh, also for my birthday, I got a new work desk. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy, I'm gonna finally be able to utilize this work desk, and uh, no one have to either use the living room or my bed to do my work, so I'm, I'm really excited. Oh, there's lag? Uh... I'm sorry if there's, like, severe lag, because, um, you know, like I said, it's been raining, and, yeah, it's it's been pretty rough lately. Let me just see if I could do that. Okay. Hopefully that the lag will be, um, you know, less now. I'm hoping it'll be less now, because, um, you know, I don't want it to happen like last time. So if you guys can be able to see me just fine, if it's like, you know, flowing consistently as opposed to being like extra super choppy, then please, you know, let me know. So um, anyway, so yeah, uh, I got a desk and now I can be able to do my work, which I'm really excited about. I, I can be able to, you know, have my laptop here and the microphone here so I can be able to have extra space for me to do my work. So, uh, yeah, so um, I guess while we're waiting for everybody, I'm going to reveal what today's game is. Da -da -da. Today will be Metroid Fusion. So uh, last time we played through Met Metroid Zero Mission, and as a lot of people um, may not know, or if you guys are new to this channel, or um, maybe you haven't seen it in a while, I already played through another Metroid 2 remake a few months ago, and I did say that I wanted to save for Super Metroid Last, because that's my favorite game of not only the Metroid series, but of all time. So, you know what, let's jump a little bit, I mean, we already went through the beginning, and we already went through the second part, but I guess we can skip over to the fourth part, but, you know, it's, uh, from, you know, it'll be all good, so, I guess we can get things started, so here we go. Hey! Hey, Pocketbook, how's it going? 
Oh, thank you so much for choosing me over somebody else that's doing a live stream. I really do appreciate it. So, uh, right now we are playing through Metroid Fusion, otherwise known as Metroid 4. I know that technically we should be playing Super Metroid or Metroid 3, but uh, since it's my favorite game of all time, as, as well as my favorite in the franchise, uh, we'll save that for last. Definitely it'll be a lot easier to play through Metroid Fusion as opposed to Super Metroid because it's a lot more linear, and hopefully it'll be a lot more quicker to, play, to complete the game as opposed to, um, you know, Zero Mission or Super Metroid. Hi Slade, thank you for joining. Okay, so if any of you guys have any questions that you want to post in the chat, please let me know. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so what's different in Metroid Fusion compared to all the other games at that point, with the exception of uh, Metroid Other M, is that there's story here. Uh, hey, welcome back, Captain Beast Mode. I've been assigned to watch over Biologic's research team, so I once again found myself on the surface of SR388. So if you guys um, recall, this was the planet that we went to in Metroid 2, or what I played through another Metroid 2 remake. Uh, no, I have not seen the Angry Beavers pilot yet, I've been super preoccupied with a lot of stuff, but I did catch a little glimpse of it and it looks pretty interesting. Maybe I'll even consider doing an episode of From Pilot to Final Product on it. But I'll have to put that in the back burner because I do have a lot of other pilots that I, I was requested to do. Some people have requested for me to do um, Adventure Time. Some people have requested me for me to do Jimmy Neutron. In fact, that's actually my most second requested one. Um, although I'll probably do the same thing what I did for Hey Arnold in which I'll come, uh, you know, I'll do like a history of Jimmy Neutron. You know, kind of like from Johnny Quasar to Jimmy Neutron. Although I think somebody may have done that already. Uh, yes, uh, Slade, we will be talking about Invader Dib on Nyx Missile 4. That'll be happening in a few weeks. So yeah, don't worry about that. We will be covering that in Nyx, Mos Nyx Missile 4. So yeah, um, if you guys haven't uh, seen my um, announcement right before the um, uh, the, po the podcast that I posted yesterday about the rejected Nixon's pilots with Casey and Ashley, I did post the very first episode of Nick's Missile 4, which was about Christmas in Tattertown, what may be the oldest cartoon that was presented to Nickelodeon as a possible Nicktoon. So yeah, uh, and then next week uh, we'll be talking about the two rejected Ren and Stimpy spinoff series. And we'll actually have a special guest with that, so I'm really excited for it. Uh, it it's actually pretty interesting, uh, the history of it. But yeah, um, don't don't you worry, we will be talking about Invader Dib. Uh, just like I mentioned in the beginning of uh, Nick's Missile 4, we will be talking about the TV movies. So we will be talking about Invader Dib, we will be talking about... Um, Cat Scratch the Search for Waffle, and we will be talking about Avatar the Search. Wow, really? The same year that your mom was born? That's awesome. Um, yeah, Pinwheel. Uh, yeah, it's just crazy to think that Pinwheel is now 40 years old. Wow, that's just crazy. That means technically Nickelodeon is 40 or pinwheel is 40 or you know it's, it's a bit of a debate like i know that technically nickelodeon started in 1979 but it technically was during the pinwheel era that we did get the precursor to nickelodeon so yeah it's 40 years that's crazy uh recent part uh did you hear about nickelodeon's recent partnership deal with Jojo Siwa, the girl from Dance Moms. She has a singing doll at Walmart Thoughts. I have never heard of that. That is interesting. But then again, <clears throat> then again, I know that Nickelodeon did have Nick Moms. I don't know if that's still a thing anymore. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of conflicted on it. I mean, I've never really been a big fan of those, you know, TV shows like Dance Moms or Toddlers and Tiaras. Like, I, I just find them to be so incredibly manipulative in which they're forcing these little girls to dance and sing and becoming stars. And it's kind of like they're living off the regrets of their mothers when they try to do that or something. It's just really, really sad. I mean, I think the best thing that I've seen, like, a parody of it was, like, 
If anybody remembers Stevie TV from VH1, in which they parodied like a whole bunch of those reality shows from back in the day, I thought that was pretty funny. And also, um, uh, the ending scene of Little Miss Sunshine, that was just amazing. But then again, that was more like about talent shows, but it's still the same premise. Uh, let's see, how many people would watch Nick in the 80s and 70s? Uh, I, a very good question. There are some people who are dedicated fans of shows from the uh, 70s and 80s. If you are interested in checking it out, uh, there's a person named Peggy Sue Clay who does that classic Nickelodeon fan blog. And she talks about 70s and 80s Nickelodeon shows. So yeah, if you're interested in learning more about that, go check it out. Uh, thoughts on The Mighty Bee? Uh, a bit disappointing, considering that I thought that, you know, somebody like Amy Poehler can be able to pull off something really funny. Um, I just felt it was, you know, leaning too much like Spongebob. It was like really annoying at points, and I just didn't really like it. I do know that a lot of people really do like the Mighty Bee, like James likes the Mighty Bee. I just, I just didn't really care for it. But then again, it's been a while since I've seen it, so maybe I have to refresh my memory about that. Oh, the tinniness of the sound. Uh, are you referring to me or you're referring to the game? Because if you're referring to the game, then um, I can lower down the, the volume of the game. If, if it's me, I'll, I'll tweak my microphone. I, I'm very sorry, Liam. Uh, do you think the Jungle Movie will outperform the KCA's 2017 this year? Um, the KCA's got 3 million views. Some people will think the Jungle Movie will get more. What do you think? People have been waiting for the Jungle Movie for a very long time. So, I think that, um, I do know that Craig is going to be showcasing, uh, you know, the trailer of the Jungle movie over in, um, Comic-Con. So, I'm, I'm hoping that it outperforms. Fingers crossed. The game? Okay. Let me just lower down the volume. I completely apologize. Let me just, uh, sound... Uh, here it is. Okay. It's as low as I can make it. I don't want to lower it down in which you can't hear anything. So let me just see if I can lower it down for my computer. Anyway, so yes, my sincere apologies, Liam. I mean, Liam. <laughs> I'm tired. Sorry. Okay, thoughts on Lego. Are you talking about the toys? Or are you talking about the video games or the movie? I saw the Lego movie. It's awesome. Pun intended. I know everything is awesome. <laughs> no, I, I really did like the Lego movie. I haven't seen the Lego Batman movie yet, but it's from the sounds of it, it sounds really good. As for the toys, um, I don't recall playing them as a kid. I mean, I do remember seeing them a lot as a kid, and I always were, was impressed with all the people who were able to make cool things out of it, and I can never do it. I've already answered this question before that, you know, games or, you know, arts and crafts and stuff like that involves with you creating things based off of, you know, like, uh, like creating your own world out of nothing or building something. I was always, always terrible on that. But Legos are cool. And as for the, um, the Lego video games, I've never played them. So... Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I do recall on is the toys and the Lego movie. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, so yeah, finally we got through that long story. At this point in time, if I was playing through uh, Metroid Zero Mission, I probably would have gotten, I don't know, the, the long beam by now. But yeah, that's the thing about uh, Metroid Fusion. It focuses a lot on story and a lot less on... Um, you know, the gameplay, which they were trying to streamline it for a more modern audience because it came out around the same time as Metroid Prime, so. Uh, you're trying to make a Metroid Fusion engine in JavaScript, and I saw some extreme weirdness in Fusion Suit sprite sheet. The virus suit in particular has a fugly color palette and purple shadows. What are those, GIFs? Um... Yeah, I, I do admit that I'm not too crazy about the design of the fusion suit nor of the Varia suit when you when Samus does eventually um, absorb the SAX parasite. <coughs> Spoilers. But um, I think that was the whole point of it. I think I remember seeing a video about Metroid Fusion from Geek Critique discussing about that it's supposed to look weird because she has the Metroid DNA inside her. So it's kind of alien. Haha. <laughs> 
put whatever so she's going through a metamorph uh, metamorphical change it's similar to alien resurrection in which um you know uh, El uh ripley has the um xenomorph dna inside of her so it's definitely like that. In fact, uh, Did You Know Gaming actually did a really good comparison about the first four Metroid games to the first four Alien game uh, movies. So yeah, I guess this is um, you know the uh, this is the Metroid uh, Metroid Fusion is the equivalent to Alien Resurrection. Make of that what you will. You know, directed by Joss Whedon. It's just crazy to believe. Uh, I know you're almost at season two of *As Told by Ginger*. What will you do when you're done with all the episodes? Huh? <sighs> I ha we don't know yet. We have no idea yet. Uh, we don't. I mean, you know, uh, Casey and Ashley. I mean, if they decide to do another show, then I'd be all for it. Or if um, you know, we just move on with them focusing on the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast, or with um, me, you know, working on my other projects. I mean, we'll just wait and see. Can't promise you anything. Hopefully, you know, we'll be able to do something else. Maybe another Nicktoon, uh, but, you know, as of right now, we're not sure. Uh, what do you think is best? Red and Stimpy or Hey Arnold? Hmm, I, I like them for different reasons. Red and Stimpy is crazy and over the top, and Hey Arnold is a simple slice of life cartoon. They're both different, but if I have to choose between Red and Stimpy or Hey Arnold, I would definitely choose Hey Arnold. Even though that I saw Red and Stimpy first, uh, Hey Arnold means a lot to me. It's very close to my heart. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Got it. Okay, so for those who are just joining us and you're probably uh, wondering what we're playing, we're playing Metroid Fusion. And this is the fourth installment of the Metroid games, and so far, Samus was attacked by the X-Parasite, who um, were taking over SR-388 after the eradication of the Metroid. She was infected by them, she has Metroid DNA inside of her, and now she can absorb the X-Parasite. So there you go. Um, have I seen any new, sh new Nick shows prior to 2014? Um, like Make It Pop, Paradise Run, schools, uh, School of Rock, or Clashlights? Um... Uh, I did see, like, bits and pieces of it, but I haven't seen this any of those shows as a whole. Mostly because, um, ever since I was done with the Nickelodeon tribute, like, I cancelled it. it. It wasn't what I always intended it to be. I never intended to review every single show. I've always wanted to do a retrospective of it, the way that game trailers, or now Easy Allies, did their retrospectives of video games. So... Um, you know, since then, I've just been focusing on, you know, doing a little bit of the retrospective on the side while I work on my videos and edit the podcasts. I have been seeing bits and pieces of it, um, especially, you know, with, um, watching, like, TMNT, Legend of Korra, and, and, uh, The Loud House. But, as for, like, the live-action shows, I've only seen, like, little bits here and there, and, you know, trust me, I mean, they've been bad for a reason. Uh, and I know, Make It Pop was co-created by Thomas W. Lynch, but I think that that was a show based off of another country. So, I mean, he, he helped with the American version, but I don't think, like, the concept was done by him. So, yeah, I mean, it's a real shame that, you know, Lynch has to be, you know, involved in another project that isn't up to his expectations, like, what I expect from it. I mean, I guess we can't expect another, um, you know, Alex Mack or Caitlin's way. Uh, anyone else to think it's weird to drink straight out of a two-liter of Dr. Pepper? Um, no. I don't think so. You do you. Uh, why did Paradise Run get cancelled? Um, probably because it wasn't getting enough views. I mean, Nickelodeon video games- I mean, not video games, game shows have been struggling for the longest time to generate towards a new audience. They've been like that for many, many years, which is kind of sad when you think about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess they haven't had that show yet. So, um, you know, who knows? Maybe if there is a Nickelodeon game show that does appeal to a more modern audience, then, you know, we'll just have to wait and see if they can be able to, um, you know, give the spark that, um, you know, the Loud House and the other Nicktoons have been doing. At least that's what I think. Uh, 
Uh, have I ever seen the Nickelodeon sitcom called Troop? Um, if you're talking about that, uh, that live action show where it involved with, um, it kind of, uh, I think the Troop was kind of like, um, you know, kind of like, was it like the, the, the show that tried to be like the next, um, Men in Black in which involved with the kids who were trying to defeat monsters on a weekly basis? I have seen that show, it's been a while. Then, um, yeah, I think I did see it, and I remember just being incredibly over the top. It's been a while since I've seen it, though. Uh, Supa Ninjas was really over the top, I remember. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't have beat AM2R 15 times? I'm sure Milton will be really, really happy to know that. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, aim to our great game, by the way. I I'm really glad that Milton was able to uh, complete it and, um, you know, release it right before Nintendo gave, like, the strict guideline of, you can't release this game and, you know, you're breaking off our violation or whatever. So, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, that's cool. You can beat AM2R in an hour and 45 minutes. Good for you. And the power's out. Yay. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, I'd love to know from your opinion, Liam. Um, you know, are you one of those people who don't like fusion because it's too linear or maybe because it has too much story? I mean, I like to know because I hear a lot of mixed opinions about uh, fusion. I personally like the game, even though that it is linear, but... You know, I do like the fact that it tries to definitely um, expand the story and it gives Samus a much more interesting personality as opposed to a certain other game. <coughs> um, yeah, so... Oh wait, that's right, I have to shoot missiles with it. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, if you've probably already seen from my old school aim blog, I do not, I repeat, I really, really do not like Metroid Other M. I really don't. Oh wait. There we go. Um, wish uh, Metroid SR388 had the same dedication. Oh yeah, I did hear about that game, yeah. It was around the time in which uh, there were like multiple Metroid 2 remakes that were coming out, like Metroid 2 re um, fan remakes. And yeah, Metroid SR388 was one of them, which is why Milton, aka Dr. M64, called it another Metroid 2 remake. Yeah, it's a shame that he wasn't able to, I mean, you know, the guy wasn't able to release, um, you know, Metroid SR388. I would have loved to have seen that. Oh, um, you do love uh, Fusion. Um, yeah, and, uh, let's see. I love Fusion and every other Metroid except for Pinball, but meh, and other M, we do not talk about that. Yeah. We do not talk about the other M. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your opinion on Hunters, though? Because I've never played the game. It's the only Metroid game so far that I've never played. Oh, go. Yeah, I've heard a lot of, like, mixed, rev uh, mixed rep opinions about it, like, oh, you know, the game is pretty good, or the game is bad with its controls, and the, the multiplayer was, like, the best thing about it, so, yeah, I'm really interested about what your thoughts are. Yes, I did hear about the That's So Raven, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, there's a missile right up here, I think I remember. Where is it? Uh, it's been a while since I played through this level. Oh wait, maybe it's somewhere else. Uh, it was okay, but not that memorable. Okay, fair enough. Uh, did I remember that there was another missile here? No, not a missile, an E-tank? There must be another E-tank here somewhere. Hmm. Oh, that's okay. I'll just go through a gung-ho.
Oh, there is one. Okay. I thought so. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay, one. Two. One more. Three. Okay, have I seen the Nick News episode with 9-11 in it? Yes, I did see that. Yeah, I remember that episode. They were talking about it, and then when Linda Ellerby was gathering up the group of kids from the classroom discussing about their, th their thoughts and opinions on it. Yeah, I do remember seeing it. Uh, Me Super Metroid X Fusion. No, I have I have not heard of that fan game. I, I take it that it's Super Metroid mixed with Metroid Fusion. That's what I think of it. Anyway, you got to talk about SpongeBob SquarePants adult party card uh, adult adult party cartoon uh, next week so far because you and James need to talk about that show and if the show coming out would have probably killed SpongeBob. Uh, our schedule is already full with uh, various uh, topics already and also um i've only seen like little snippets of it here and there um as for like you know actual discussions on the um, on spongebob i mean you know, unless i see like a, a foolproof article discussing about it as a whole maybe i can do discussions of it but as of right now um i already have um all the shows that i want to talk about so, um, I'm not interested in talking about that right now because a few years ago we did talk about Adult Party Cartoon and as of right now, that's like our second most hated uh, podcast in Nick Slimecast Podcast. The first one being the Proud Family discussion because it wasn't an episode of the Proud Family. So, <sighs> yeah. Um, let's see. Do I like the Mortal Kombat games? Yes, I do. I do like the Mortal Kombat games. Oh, that's right, the, that's the Sub-Zero continent. Yes, I do like it. I remember when I first played it when I was a kid, my cousin had rented it from uh, Blockbuster, if you remember what that is. But, uh, yeah, he, rem he rented um, Mortal Kombat 2. That was the first one we ever played. And still to this day, um, Scorpion's my favorite character. My cousin's favorite character is Sub-Zero. Boom! And here comes the SAX. Ah, oh, look at those piercing eyes. Anyway, so yeah, um, I did play Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. I played Shaolin Monks multiplayer with my cousin. And I played through Mortal Kombat 9. I have not played through Mortal Kombat 10 yet. Or Mortal Kombat X. I don't know what they call it. But, yeah, Mortal Kombat 9, really awesome game. <coughs> okay, so let's see. Yes, I do know that The Loud House is getting a theatrical movie in 2020. And, yeah, that's kind of crazy to think that the show's been out for a whole year. And it's already getting a movie. I mean, Spongebob needed to get at least... I don't know, like four or five years at that point in order for it to get a movie. I mean, let's see. The SpongeBob movie came out in, I think it was 2004, and the show came out in 99, so that's four, like four years already. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess The Loud House is already becoming like the number one show on Nickelodeon, ages 2 through 11. It's just crazy. I mean, you know, it's already getting bigger v reviews and, you know, more views than Spongebob. A lot of people didn't think that that was possible for a long time, but The Loud House really left an impact on people. Some people are saying, like, it's the next generation Hey Arnold, which I can see where they're coming from. Uh, it's definitely, you know, one of the very few slice of life cartoons that are out there uh, next to Clarence. Yeah, I kind of see slice of life cartoons nowadays being like the 3D platformers of animation. 
it's definitely reminiscent of what used to be around in the 90s, but there's very few of it nowadays. Uh, Shamix, I see that you're doing a whole bunch of, um, posting and rambling again. I have mentioned to you before that I really don't like that, so if you can please stop that, I really do appreciate it. Oh, it froze on the SAX face. I'm so sorry, Liam. I'm very, very sorry. And that must have been really scary. Yeah. I remember when I first saw SAX in Metroid Fusion. I was, like, so freaked out. Like, man, that was so creepy. Okay. Let's get the first one. And I, I didn't realize this little fun fact until I watched the Did You Know of Gaming video on Metroid, but... Uh, yes, they're right there. If you can see through, right there on the left-hand side, that right there is a Nintendo GameCube. I'm sure you'll pause the video and look at this later on if you have the chance. Okay, is Disney's Doug, uh, do you think the replacement voice actors were good in their own terms? Um, I did mention in the video is D if Disney's Doug is really that bad that I did mention that I do give respect to the voice actors for being the replacements, but it just didn't feel the same to me personally. I mean, I do give them respect. You know, I do respect that they did have to replace them because they couldn't get Billy West, but it just wasn't the same in my personal opinion. I mean, I didn't hate it. It just didn't feel right to me. Uh, since I did my top 10 best Angry Beavers episodes, um, what are my top 10 worst? Um, I, I'm sorry if I keep ignoring your question. I'm just, you know, going through the playthrough and reading everybody else's questions at the same time. Um, worst Angry Beavers episodes, huh? Um, hmm. I didn't, I mean, not, I haven't seen, like, any worse ones, like, oh my god, that was awful. I mean, uh, you know, there were some episodes of season five that I didn't really care about, but um, there were some episodes that I that were just okay. I just didn't really care about them. Uh, not the ones that I can think of on the top of my head. Oh uh, no, I meant S A X Ray a vid by. Metaquaris about X fusion with three SAXs. Never seen it. Yeah, um, is it what like what 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 kind of video is it? Is it like one of those like creepy pasta videos? If it is, I've never been a big fan of those kind of you know videos and th those kind of theories that are trying to scare people. Ooh, it's like eh. uh but yeah, um I'm curious. Uh, you know, let me know what it is. Anyway, back to Angry Beavers. Um, yeah, I, I think there were some episodes that I did watch that I did really click with. I thought it was kind of forgettable, but not ones that I really hated. And also, I don't really want to be one of those people in which I have to do um, like a top 10 worst list because I, I just feel like it's, you know, unless it's really justified, I would never do something like that. I don't want to be like really negative on, you know, my content. I, I, I don't want to be like one of those thing, people who's like, oh, you know, everything's positive all around. It's like, ouch. Oh, that's okay. I didn't need to be there anyway. But if I do have to say something that is like absolutely awful, then, you know, I say it with the utmost respect. I'm not going to go on full-on rant mode saying that this is the absolute worst and it's awful and you should never watch it. So, yeah. I mean, I, I was actually planning on doing... A top 10 worst episodes list uh, a while ago but I just felt so incredibly unsatisfied with it that I just stopped it although some people want me to do one at some point and if I am I'm not gonna do one on the Angry Beavers
Okay, thank you for the link. I will definitely take a look into it later, Liam. Uh, what are my thoughts on Cat Scratch? Like Cat Scratch, uh, pretty underrated show. Uh, for maybe a lot of people, they thought it was like really weird, but this is Doug Tenaple we're talking about. He is really weird. This is the same guy who said, let's put an earthworm in a spacesuit and have him go on crazy adventures. Yeah, that'll be an awesome video game. And yeah, I, I do like Cat Scratch. It's a shame that it lasted for only like 20 episodes. Have I ever played Pokemon? Yes, I have played Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon Yellow was my very first Pokemon game. And uh, I did play through Gold and Silver. Um, well, I played through Gold. And uh, for the longest time, I didn't pick up any of the other Pokemon games. I did play through X after like being out of, out of Pokemon for a long time and I'm going to die. Uh, where should we go? Let's get out of here. I need health. Oh crap. Oh crap. Crap, crap, crap. I gotta get out. I gotta get out. I gotta get out. Okay. Okay, save room. I'll save there, and if I die, I'll be okay. Um. Oh, really? It skipped through your question? Um, no, I, I, um, I haven't, uh, I haven't discussed about anything regarding, like, on, like, worst angry beavers list. Uh, that's right, I don't have the morph ball. I mean, I do have the morph ball, but I don't have the bomb, so I can't jump up there. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, jump. Okay, jump. I hate the wall jump in this game. I never can get it. Come on. There we go. Uh, eh, I'll, I'll do that later. Anyway. Let me just read through the question. Okay, um... I didn't answer the question regarding about top 10 worst angry beavers list, uh, because I didn't find any ones that I found to be, like, downright awful. It's just some that I was- I just found to be pretty forgettable. So yeah, there's- there's my answer to your question. <clears throat> okay. Yes, uh, the Animaniacs reboot has been 100% confirmed. Um... Uh, as for, like, uh, you know, what are my thoughts on it, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I just hope that it does really well. As for, like, um, you know, how's it gonna be, I don't know yet. It's still pretty fairly new. If Skeeter and Connie from Doug got married, would their kid be Teal? <sighs> I have no idea. Ah, I need health. I don't need missiles. Okay, it's good. Oh, crap. Probably they'll be a different color because for some reason, you know, even the characters from Doug, their colors of their kids are not consistent. So yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll be Teal. And also, Skeeter and Connie. I've never even thought of that pairing. Actually pretty interesting. Okay, there's nothing in here, so uh, need to get need to get some health. Need to get out of here and dead. Yeah, I know that there the next one was the stabilizer, but my, I'm I'm almost dead. Uh. All right, let's try this again. Oh my god, help me. All right, let's try this again. Take two. Ugh. 
Okay. Okay. So let's see. Uh, did I hear that Rocco's? Uh, oh, Nick is going to reveal a sneak peek of the Rocco's Modern Life TV movie on June twenty third. Is that around the same time as um, the San Diego Comic Con? Because if it is, I'm really looking forward to it. Should be really exciting. Okay, let's get the health again. Okay, that's one. Hopefully I don't die. Okay, let's see if one more can give me some health. Okay, I'm okay now. Do you think many years from now, Nickelodeon will start will still get a ton of hate from people uh, for what they did to Korra? Ah, oh, man, that's a good question. Probably. I mean, they did treat Korra, Korra pretty shoddily, but then again, um, at least they did air the episodes somewhere, as opposed to like in As Told by Ginger, where they didn't air the episodes at all until like until the splat came out. So, I mean. Yeah, at least with Korra, it's a more well-known show, but yeah, we'll just have to see. But I think that, yeah, I mean, I don't, I think that Nickelodeon did a really shoddy decision with not including, you know, showing Korra on TV and giving it the recognition that it deserved. That was a pretty, pretty poor decision that they did. Okay, this is where I was supposed to go. Oh god, help me. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm a little bit better now. Oh, I didn't change the description. Ah, uh, no. I'll change it as soon as I'm done with the live stream. So thank you for pointing that out, Liam. Now that was from that was from two weeks ago, where I was playing through Zero Mission. There we go. Um. Yes, I do know about that Blame It on Jorge did discuss about Nick's um, uh, uh, Net Declassified High School Survival Guide on that video. Um, I didn't know about it until my cousin told me um, that she did see it and she was like, Hey, guess what? You're famous. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then she told me that Blame It on Jorge did uh, showcase a clip of that. And I was, like, perfectly okay with it, just as long as he, you know, said that it was from my source, as opposed to, like, um, you know, completely stealing it and saying that he got it from his own right. So, yeah, that was pretty cool of him. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I already answered the, the the question on Cat Scratch. Really do like the show. Uh, I thought it was a bit underrated. So. Oh no. There we go. And yes, I have played Pokemon before. The boss theme for the Corex is ridiculous. Um, it's fine. I'm not a big fan of the music in Fusion. I just think that it's atmospheric and it does its job done, I mean, job well. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of the soundtrack of this game. Okay, here's the last generator.
Yeah, I, I, I am. I do apologize about the la the live stream in the second half lagging. I don't know what happened. Uh, let's see. Have I ever played Roblox? Never played it. So yeah, I have no thoughts on it. And also, I've never seen Fully Cooly, even though that I probably should have. Like that show came out like around the two thousands when I was in college. So I probably would have seen Fully Cooly, but. I just heard so many things about it, and it just looked incredibly over the top. Um, I haven't seen the show. I do know a few friends of mine who have seen it. There are some who like it, and then some who don't. So I definitely need to watch it for myself, especially since I think I did hear... But I think it was like a year ago that I did hear discussions about that they were going to bring Fully Cooly back in another season. So if that's the case, then I definitely do need to check it out for myself. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, uh, okay, right, let me just get out of here first. If, uh, let's see. Uh, the GBA lacking a sound card did not help one bit. Yeah, that is true. They didn't have much of a sound card because they wanted to focus on smoother gameplay, from what I heard. So, you know, it, you, you have to deal with the limitations that they had back then, which is a shame. Okay, um... Why do you think the creators go from creating a good show to creating a bad show? I don't think that that was their intention. Their intention was never meant to, like, I'm gonna create this show because, you know, I feel like creating something bad. It's like, I don't think that's what their main intention was. I just think maybe it's either because, you know, maybe it's not up to our expectations. Like, you know, you know this guy from creating this amazing show and then you just see their next project and it's like, it doesn't meet to your expectations. Or maybe they're just burned out on ideas. Or maybe they were focusing on their, um, their focus on, and their dream about what they want to do and it doesn't turn out to be that uh, one that anybody else wanted. I think it's similar to, like, John Lasseter, in which, you know, he really wanted to do cars based off of um, a road trip that he took with his family, and it was, like, really personal to him, but for a lot of people, they thought it was, like, one of the weakest in the um, Pixar lineup, so, um, or it's either due to corporate mandates, so... I mean, uh, for Awesomeness TV, I remember when we first saw the online stuff, I thought that it had potential, and James and I were pretty excited about it, but its transition to TV was not the best. It was not the best at all. Let me just get a water break. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, Liam. Nobody intends to create something bad. I mean, if they did, then they're complete jerks, and they shouldn't even deserve to create anything at all. It's like, um, Uva Bull, who apparently, he was given money to create really bad movies, and if that's the case, that's awful. You shouldn't even, you don't even deserve to create anything if your main intention is to create something bad on purpose. In fact, um, one of the pilots that we're going to be discussing about in Nick's Missile 4 had really good intentions, but it was marred due to the people working on the pilot not even caring. And it turned out to be a lackluster result. So, yeah, I mean, it's due to a lot of things. I have learned the identity of our mystery saboteur. Samus, it's an ex -emis yeah, It's an ex-mimicking you. It's called the SAX. <gasps> Shocking! Have you been in- Okay, okay let's continue on, shall we? Uh, how did you get in contact with all your guests from more in between? Um, well, for people like Jared, uh, and for people like Ken, uh, they do have official websites, and I just email them, and, uh, so, and, as, as well as Aspen. Uh, you know, I just emailed them on their official websites, they had, you know, their email address, and I just wrote them saying, uh, you know, for Jared, the first one, I just wrote to his, um, email address that was in his official website saying, hey, um, would you be interested in guest starring in this podcast about As Told by Ginger? And he was like, yeah, I would love to. And, uh, the same thing for Aspen as well. Um, and, uh, let's see, and, uh, ja Jared was the one who got in, you know, g got in contact with Ken. I, I did write to Ken in his official email address just in case, but Jared did hook us up with Ken, which I'm always really appreciative of, so thank you, Jared. And thank you, Ken, for being uh, a guest on the show. And as for Jackie, um, I don't want to say how I got in contact with her, but I got in contact in a way that wasn't 
orthodox per se, but uh, we were able to get a hold of her, and she was okay with it, of course. And as for upcoming guests, yes, we will be having some more guests for We're In Between. Uh, in fact, next week, we're actually going to announce what our next get who our next guest is going to be. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see. Favorite Hey Arnold character? Helga. She's my favorite Hey Arnold character because she's just so incredibly complex with everything that's been going on in her life. And, you know, she has a sad, tragic backstory. And I just find her to be so fascinating. Uh, I, I really wish the Patakis would have happened. Uh, let's see. Who would you like to have on uh, as guests for Wearing Between? Um, other guests that I would love to have on, um, you know, when we were talking with Jackie, she even brought up that she was going to invite Liz Georges uh, alongside with her to, you know, on the podcast, which, oh man, that would have been so cool. We would love to have Liz as a guest. Uh, for those who don't know who Liz is, Liz George was the voice of Courtney Grippling from As Told by Ginger. So yeah, I would love to have her as a guest. I haven't heard anything yet, but if I do, you'll be the first to know. Well, that's right, I, I'm not gonna go through there yet. What are some of your favorite film soundtracks? Ooh, film soundtracks. That's a good question. Um, that's right. The data room's right over there, but I can't go through there yet because I need to unlock the security room. At least I know where it is. Film soundtracks. Hmm, that's a good question. I really like the Back to the Future soundtrack. I mean, I know it's a cliche, and, you know, also anything by John Williams. He's a genius. Ah, uh, let's see what else. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I guess a lot of the Disney soundtracks. Ever since I did the, um, the the podcast with Chris about the Disney Renaissance era, for some reason, you know, I've just been listening to a lot of Disney music. I mean, I, I mean, I do love Disney music, but I, I never used to listen to it like that much. But yeah, a lot of the Disney soundtracks are so awesome. I just, you know, I mean, I'm not much of a f film soundtrack. I'm, I like listening to, like, TV soundtracks and video game soundtracks. More video game soundtracks than anything. I always listen to video game soundtracks whenever I'm writing a script or um, editing my videos. Metroid music is what I listen to the most. Whether it be Super Metroid or Metroid Prime or another Metroid 2 remake, which I've been listening to more lately. Those are like my main three. Uh, the security room is on the other side of the sector. For say, CX counter coming your way. Thank you very much, Liam. Do you think the Jungle Movie or possible sixth season of Arnold will update to today's technology like smartphones and laptops? Wouldn't be surprised, considering that it was at the time more focusing focusing on that. Um you know, with beepers and all that stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do, but I don't think they'll push it, like, too much. But then again, it's supposed to take place, like, a year afterwards, so having smartphones and laptops will be kind of out of place. I mean, I don't know. That's actually a pretty interesting question. I mean, would they have that in today's day and age? I'm not sure. Okay, I know they're supposed to be somewhere here. Or maybe that was the room that had nothing in it. Anyway, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's actually a really interesting question, considering that, you know, I, I know that there was supposed to be... It takes place around when they're in the, uh, the fifth grade. So, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see, shall we? All right, I can go in the data room now. Uh, 
Uh, would you like to see a Kenan and Kel sequel where their sons get into wacky situations like their dads and Kenan and Kel will have to help them out? That would be kind of interesting. I mean, I know that Kenan and Kel would love to do some more projects together ever since they did their stint on the, um, on, um, the Jimmy Fallon show. So yeah, I would, you know, that would be a lot of fun. I mean, they've been doing a lot of, um, you know, continuations of live action shows. They've done Fuller House. And now they're thinking about doing the That's So Raven sequel. So I wouldn't be surprised if Nickelodeon will get into the popularity of, you know, doing that. Although, uh, we, you know, uh, Kenan and Kel with their kids and their kids acting crazy, that should be really interesting. And there goes the SAX blowing everything up. Yay! Uh, the one thing that I really do hate about F Fusion, the same thing that I really do hate about Super Metroid, the bombs take forever. I mean, I do like that in um, Metroid Zero Mission and more recently with um, another Metroid 2 remake, their bombs are so much quicker. So you can be able to pull off um, a lot more stunts. So... That's just a nitpick, but that's just always something that always grinded my gears. I know it's not a Family Guy joke. I'm talking about planes, trains, and automobiles. Anyway, want to hear a nerdy joke? I said Smash Brother Samus is thick to my sister, who told me you're objectifying women. So I said, but is Samus Samus is an object yet? <laughs> you win. You win, Liam. Oh my God. If you're talking about object, like morph ball object, like, oh god. That's... Wow. I mean, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you think the... How do you think the Hey Arnold t Jungle movie will appeal to or catch up with today's kids who didn't grow up with Hey Arnold? Uh, that's a good question. I actually did mention something like this when I discussed about um, the Jungle movie in Nick's Missile 3. That I'm hoping that the Jungle movie, when it comes out, I hope they do one of three things. I hope that they do a huge marathon of Hey Arnold right before the Jungle movie comes out. That's obviously the, that's the obvious thing. Number two, I hope that the Jungle movie will maybe have like a little recap of what happened in the journal. Like maybe like have like one or two minutes discussing about like, hey, I'm Arnold. You know, these are my friends and I'm looking for my parents. And it shows like maybe like a, a more modern clip of the journal. You know, the scene in which when Arnold opens the journal and he finds a map to his parents. I like to see that happen. Or um, maybe like throughout the movie... It can be that, um, you know, they bring up moments of it, you know, like moments of the, the series for those who haven't seen it. I'd love to see that happen. But I'm, I'm hoping that they do not only appeal to the generation who grew up with the show, I hope they also appeal to the kids who didn't grow up with it. But hopefully, you know, because it's been out on DVD and they've been airing it on Nick Splat, then maybe it'll appeal to the generation who didn't grow up with the show. Okay, this is where we're almost close to where the SAX is. Okay, so let me just bomb here. There we go. Craig Bartlett is taking more of, um, oh, it's, it's gone. I'm, I meant object as in the code, because everything that does anything in code is an object. Oh! <laughs> okay, now I get it. Aha, very funny. Okay, uh, it's a code joke, yes. Who would Kel be married to? I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, I doubt that he would be married to Kyra. I doubt it. I really doubt it. In fact, if there is to be a sequel with, um, you know, Keenan and Kel, I hope that if they do include Kyra, I hope that they at least give her a personality because 
She was just absolutely pointless in Keenan and Kel. The only reason why she was there was because she was saying to Kel, Oh, I love you, Kel. Or she was tattling to her parents saying that, Oh, Keenan and Kel are doing this. Nah. So I hope that they give her an ounce of personality if they ever bring her back. But I don't know who Kel would be married to. That's a good question. Okay, so... Here we go. Oh wait, no. This is where this is where the SAX is supposed to be, but I don't think I'm supposed to be here yet. No, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to actually fall from up there, so I need to go higher. <coughs> my apologies. I'm still recovering from my cold. Hey, Nick Infinite, 1992. Welcome to the live stream. I'm not supposed to be here yet. Okay, no, I'm supposed to be here. Okay, that's where the power bomb is. Okay, my brother made a video where he messes with the SAX's terrible AI in that room. Ah, cool. Maybe Kel is married to Mrs. Quag. No, why would he be married to Mrs. Quagmire? What, what happened to what happened to Roger? I don't I don't think so. No, that that doesn't sound right. It's kind of like that episode of uh, Jimmy Neutron in which Carl was really close to marrying, you know, Judy ever since um, Jimmy did that potion, that love potion that actually made him brainwash. And then he says that funny line where he says, I, it, you know, it's, I was really close to being your stepdad. That would have been, if that were to happen, that would have been so awkward. Ah, oh, come on, give me the eye. There we go. Ah, my, my controls fucked. There we go. What's my least favorite gaming console? Hmm. Least favorite gaming console. Ugh, I haven't played any gaming consoles that I thought were bad. Um, but if I had one that I didn't have a fun time experiencing, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I didn't really care for the, um, Sega CD. I remember that I was playing at my cousin's house and she had, um, the Spider-Man vs. Pin, uh, Pinhead, not Pinhead, um, Kingpin video game. And we were just so bad at it. But if I have to say, like, a game console that I don't really care about, um... Oh, crap. Okay, there we go. I don't know, I mean... Probably, the, it's either the Sega CD or the Sega Game Gear. But, and, uh, but if you want to know about a console that I didn't really care about, like legitimately didn't care about it would probably be the Xbox because I'm just not a first person shooter fan and that's what everybody played through around college. It was always Halo tournaments. Always Halo tournaments. And and you know, it's like I brought my PlayStation 2 along with me and everybody was just going crazy about Halo and just I didn't really care for it. Maybe because I sucked at it or maybe because everybody just made a big deal out of it. Okay, there we go. But yeah, I mean, not that I really hate it. It's just that I never really got into. Yeah, those. I would probably say those are my least favorites. I mean, not because I hated them, but just because I never really got into them. 
There we go. I mean, it's not I'm gonna say like something really obscure like, um, I didn't really like the, the Philips CDI or the Gizmondo because they were the worst things ever. It's like, no, I've never even played those games. Um, I grew up with SNES. By the time I was able to play video games, people were talking about the Nintendo 64. Yeah, I grew up with SNES as well. And, um, yeah, I guess what, um, I, that, that's another game console I don't really care too much about, the N64. Because I never played with an N N64 when it first came out. I was, I had the PlayStation. Uh, I, although I did miss out on a lot of awesome games. But I, I, the only ones that I did play later on were like, you know, um... Magic kazooie Super Mario 64, the two Zelda games, and uh, Super Smash Brothers. And that's pretty much it. I don't think I played any of the other games. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. I mean, everybody talks about like how amazing the other games are, but I've just never played them because I didn't grow up with them. Although probably everybody's going to hate me now. There was one person who said that, why don't you do um, a podcast on the um, N64? And I just said, I can't because I didn't grow up with it. <coughs> oh, you got your Nintendo 64 around Christmas. Awesome. Uh, I didn't play, I never grew up with them. So, yeah, I wish I would have uh, grown up with them like a lot of other people did. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just a little, I'm, I'm still recovering from my cold. Uh, yeah, Majora's Mask. Yeah, it was pretty creepy. I I mean, even the 3DS version I hear was, like, pretty messed up. Like, they really upped the graphics and the face. I saw a picture of the, f the face on the 3DS. It's like, wow, that's creepy. Like, wow. There we go. This is where I'm supposed to be. Here comes the SAX, creeping down the hallway. Yeah, don't go down there. If any of you guys have never played Metroid Fusion, don't go after the SAX. You will be dead. <sighs> well, we have to do fight it later on, but that's much later on. Okay. Okay, you want to exit out. I never grew up with any of the games you were mentioning. I know only PlayStation 3 because my brother had one, so we can play some basketball video games. Okay. Yeah, it's flu season for some reason. I hope that you feel I hope that you feel better too. The moon face. Yes, I do mean about the moon face. Like, man, I remember when I first saw it, I was like so creeped out. And when I saw the, the what you know when I heard that they were doing a remake of it on the 3DS and I saw the new picture of the moon, wow, that really f just like that freaked me out. But yeah, it's, that that was scary. Hey, the end. How's it going? I still recall playing Mario 64 and Star Fox 64 for the first time, and my mind was blown. Oh, that's another game that I did play on the N64. I played. Um, uh, I played Star Fox 64. Now I remember, because I actually downloaded that on Virtual Console. Mario 64... I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but... I don't care for Mario 64. I mean, after I played games like Super Mario Galaxy, it just... Man, it's like... Man, we just come so far with games nowadays. Okay, just... I, I don't think I... Okay. Let's see if we can... No, I don't think I can jump up here. I think I'm t still too... Yeah, I, I don't think I'm supposed to be up here yet. Uh, yeah, um... I've beaten all the Metroids except for Other M for obvious reasons and Prime 3 because... Phase is too long. Uh, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I already beat all the three games. Uh, let's just say... Um... The fight with Dark Samus was pretty cool, and the fight with Omega Ridley was awesome. Aurora Unit, pretty disappointing. But I'm sure you've probably already heard that before.
What if Rugrats Preschool Days aired on Nick Splat? If it did air on Nick Splat, then maybe they'll remember why nobody liked Rugrats Preschool Days in the first place. Ugh. Oh, my god, that show. Ugh. Oh, just that show was just so bad. Uh, I know I'm supposed to go up there, but I can't remember how I was supposed to go up there in the first place. <coughs> it's going good, asshole by Ginger or Avatar? Oh man, why? Uh. I mean, Avatar is better than, you know, It's I, I think it's the best Nicktoon that they've ever made, in my personal opinion. But man, I mean, it's like when they told, it's like when, um, I think it was Pocketbook who, an who told me the question, what do you prefer, uh, Hey Arnold or is told by Ginger? It's like, man, that's a tough question. Why do people say that kind of stuff? But if I do have to choose between the two of them, it would definitely have to be Avatar. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, let me just try going up there. Let me see. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to go up there and just leave through this room. But yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, as much as I do love As Told by Ginger, I do have to say that Avatar was better. Uh, do I like All Grown Up? I kind of grew up with the show and everyone that I've watched it on YouTube hates it. Um, oh boy. All Grown Up. I mean... <sighs> I mean, here's the thing. I mean, All Grown Up did have some really good ideas, but I think that some of their execution was a little bit off. It's, I, I mean, I probably, I mean, there's actually somebody who actually requested me to do a video on is All Grown Up really that bad, similar to how I did Rugrat, I mean, Disney's Doug. So, yeah, uh, this is where I'm supposed to go. There we go. So yeah, I mean, if you guys want me to do a video on it, then please let me know in the chat. Do you want me to see a, do you want me to do a video on is um is all grown up really that bad? But you know, I haven't seen the show in a while. I do know that there were some decent episodes, but I do recall that some of the episodes were pretty forgettable. I, I do know that some of their execution could have been pulled off a little bit better. So yeah. Uh, biggest big-lipped alligator moment that I've s ever seen. Okay. Uh, this is probably going to be a little bit crazy, but here's what I say. Okay, so I remember when I first saw the first episode of Jungle Wa Itsimo Hale no Chigu, which is an anime that I saw when I was in college. The very first episode is basically that. So, um, basically, the show is about a jungle boy named Hale, and he just lives his everyday life with his mom in the jungle. And then comes this girl who's really pale, and her name is Goo, and she starts off really sweet and kind, and then she, when Hale wakes up the next morning, she's all, like, sulky and depressed, and then just a whole bunch of weird stuff happens, like, she took a banana, like, a whole banana without the peel, I mean, w with the peel, puts it in her mouth, swallows it, and then she spits it out. And then she did the same thing with Hale's bird, except that she didn't spit it out again, and that it's actually inside of her. And then she tries eating the TV, and then he tells her to not do it while he's playing a video game. Oh, the video game was even crazier. Like, it looks like an RPG, like Final Fantasy. And it starts off with, like, you know, stereotypical stuff. Like, he's in the final battle, and he just, like you know, swinging a sword, and then it turns into, like, uh, one of those Japanese paper fans, and then it turns into a bazooka. <laughs> But that's not the weirdest one. So apparently Goo ate Hale and then he wakes up into this crazy world that has like a cat with like multiple legs, like a millipede, like a millipede. And then the and then there's like the sky is all yellow and this weird stuff is happening. And then there's these two people who never who he's never met before, but they know they seem to know him like they're his, like his oldest friends and he's like all confused. And then when he wakes up, he thought it was a dream, but it turned out that she actually did eat him and she's spat him out <laughs> it was weird the set the series is surprisingly subnormal after that but man that was weird 
And then uh, another show that was just like really weird was uh, Binobashi Magical Shopping Arcade. Like the first episode is basically, you know, it's about these two kids that they live in a they live in a, um, a small uh, like region known as Abinobashi. They live in a, a shopping arcade, like a, the shopping arcade area. And the girl is moving away and the guy wants her to stay because they're best friends. And so while they're talking with one another, a lot of weird stuff happens and it turns out while well, there's a bunch of old people doing ch Tai Chi, they turn into mushrooms and then they get sucked into like this gigantic vortex and they end up in different dimensions of the Abinobashi shopping arcade. There's one that looks like a crazy anime where they do like a whole bunch of anime parodies there's one that looks like a space station there's one that looks like a medieval times it was weird the ending was really disappointing though so yeah uh those are th that was basically like the crazy ones anime am i right okay Oh, uh, let's see. The Amanda Show or Drake and Josh? Um, I like them both for different reasons. There you are. Yeah, I like them both for different reasons. Uh, you know, the Amanda Show is definitely like uh, the 90s version of the Carol Burnett Show. And Drake and Josh did feel like a, a decent follow-up to Keenan and Kel. Although, I don't like it as much as everybody else likes it. They think of it, like, as the greatest show ever. It, I, I find it to be good. I mean, I find it to be okay. There are some things about it that I do genuinely like. But I don't seem to praise it like everybody else does. Uh, let's see. I know there's something here that I'm supposed to do. Do I remember Channel Chasers? Yes, I do remember Channel Chasers. Uh, I do like Channel Chasers. It's my probably my favorite of the Fairly Odd Parents movies. Um Yes, Abino Bashi is one big alligator moment, especially if you find out at the end like who the main boy character is. It's weird. Uh, it's only 13 episodes long, so if you want to have, like, a massive acid trip, then go have fun. Also, um, another anime that's, like, a massive acid trip would probably have to be, um... Uh, let's see, what else? There was another one. I do remember that this one came out, like, when I was in college. Uh, if anybody can remember what the movie is, um, it's the movie that was, you know, involved with the girl going inside a dream, which many people kind of say that it was like a precursor to Inception. Paprika! That's what it was called, Paprika. Yeah, that movie's weird. Like, wow. Like, you will, you will think that you've been on drugs. Okay, let's see. Oh, pff, I'm reading the questions. Uh, let's see. Sorry for the repeat. The messages scroll way past the first time I said that. That's okay. No worries. What are your thoughts about polar bears? I love polar bears. I, in fact, bears are my second favorite animals of all time. My first favorite being otters. Otters are my favorite animals. My third, my second favorite are bears. I love bears. And my third favorite are wolves. I love wolves. So yes, I love polar bears. I love polar bears. I love grizzly bears. Um, yeah, I love bears. So yeah, those are my top three favorite animals. Otters. Oh, hold on. There we go. Otters, bears, and wolves. I know that they're all predators. Well, except for the otters. Otters are just so adorable and cute. But yeah, I know two out of my three favorite animals are predators, but I just love them. Okay, hey, no parking, Barry. What's up? How are you doing? Channel Chasers was supposed to be the finale for P Fairly Odd Parents. From what I saw and from what I've been told, 
It's, um, I might as well get some help later on, but yeah, let's just get out of this level. I'm already sick of it. Thank you so much. Um, I really do appreciate your comments, everybody. So yeah, keep them going. Sorry if I don't read them as much. Uh, hey, uh, Tay T. Kuhn, it's been a while. Yeah, long time no see. How you been? Hope you've been doing really well. Uh, Timmy writes, this is the sincerest form of flattery on the... Oh, pff, didn't save. Let me just go back again. On the chalkboard, yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, let's see. Worst and best iCarly episode. Hmm. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen iCarly, but... I do recall when, you know, Gabe was in the podcast, we would talk about so many bad Art Carly episodes. I'll definitely need to uh, rewatch the show at some point because a lot of people want me to discuss about Art Carly. <sighs> but, you know, I mean, my good friend Rowdy already did a review of Art Carly a few years ago. And uh, even though he only saw like a handful of s episodes in the season... Um, I, I really do need to take, check it out for myself because for some reason a lot of people say that iCarly was Dan Schneider's best show, which I don't, uh, I don't really agree with, but I want to see from their perspective. Uh, let's see. What about Norm of the North? Uh, I've never seen Norm of the North. I do know that it stars a polar bear. Um, yeah, I, I heard some really bad things about it, so... I'm not interested in watching it. Me and Rebel Taxi kind of introduced me to As Told by Ginger. I want to thank you for that. Oh, you're very welcome. I didn't know that Rebel Taxi reviewed As Told by Ginger. That's pretty awesome of him. If he did review As Told by Ginger, I'll definitely have to check out what his thoughts are. Because I don't know about... A, I don't... I mean, I've only seen like a handful of people who discussed about it, either in blog form or in video form, but yeah... That's pretty cool. Really, I'm really uh, appreciative of that. I'm always, you know, really appreciative of people who are saying, like, I got introduced to this show because of you, so that really means a lot to me. At least iCarly was better and had more effort than the sitcoms afterwards. I think it was just a matter of Jan Schneider didn't completely go to massive burnout and that Sam and Cat pretty much overshadowed everything else with it being awful. So, yeah, anything after Sam and Cat, you would definitely give it, like, quality. Except for Game Shakers, just... <sighs> it was like iCarly 2.0, except that he didn't clearly learn the lesson from iCarly about using the concept and going extremely creative with it. But instead, it's just squandered. Is it fair to judge a show before its official premiere? No, it's not. It's not fair to judge a show before its premiere. I mean, it's, it's like the Ghostbusters 2016 movie all over again. It's currently like the most hated video on YouTube, but then when it came out, it was okay. It was decent from what I heard in the reviews. I haven't seen the movie yet, but they made a big deal out of nothing. So watch the show or watch the movie whenever it comes out and don't just look at it from, you know, the trailer or from the preview or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I, I, I did hear the same thing about the Emoji movie that, you know, it's like now becoming like the next Ghostbusters 2016 in which it has like a lot of hates on its YouTube trailer video. So, I mean, I would just watch it or if you're not interested in watching it, then at least, you know, ask somebody who has watched it and find out what their opinion is. So, yeah, I just, yeah, just don't do that. It's, it's not right. Is Mo Super Mario Galaxy 1 or 2 better? Mm, that's a good question. Personally, I love the first game, but Mario Galaxy 2 is also a really good game. It does add in a lot more things, and they have Yoshi in it, so... Yeah, I mean, if you would say... I would say conceptually, the, the second game is better, but I personally love the first game. Okay. Let's see. Well, he did mention As Told by Ginger as, like, one of the ugliest cartoons. I do kind of agree as well. It's not the best looking, but then again, it is the Klasky Chupo style, and you take that for what it is. I mean, I do think that... I, I didn't even mention this before in the um, Why is Told by Ginger was a groundbreaking and overlooked Nicktoon, that uh, Klasky Chupo's unique style can work if it's in the right context with a certain, you know, with certain shows. Like, 
Our real monsters and Duckman are perfect for the classy Chupo style. Something as a uh, simple slice of life show as this told by Ginger, I don't think it works. So yeah. Um but then, then again, this is Klasky Chupo. You can't expect that they're going to have like a really u unique sense of style. Uh, considering that Gabor Chupo is Hungarian and he did bring a lot of Eastern European artists and animators to work on the shows, you can't expect that it is going to be of a uh, different quality. Okay. Let's see. Stay away from Norma the North. I will. When you talked about constant pain, you said Nickelodeon was too reliant on Nicktoons by outside studios like Klasky Chupo, but shows like SpongeBob and CatDog were actually produced in-house by Nick Animation Studios. Yeah, but that was a little bit later on. I'm talking about, like, for 2001, like, you had, um, you know, Billion Ford with the Fairly Odd Parents and... Um, you had Klasky Chupo, obviously, but I think that the one that was in-house was, like... Um, I think it was like Invader Zim, but it didn't really work out very well, so maybe that was one of the possibilities. I also did mention about how, you know, um, Nick Animation Studios was making like $800 million, and that the artists and the animators and the writers were pretty much being paid for nothing. And so, yeah, I mean, it was a shame that they were, uh, that Nickelodeon a Animation Studios were getting really greedy when Michael Wright told them, can we please get a little bit more money, and they pretty much said no. A shame. Okay, there's a. But also the the whole 9/11 attack didn't exactly help out either. Come on, flip. You know, I always felt that. You know, the only time in which I do feel like the the wall jump was a little bit more responsive was with Zero Mission and another Metroid 2 remake, but yeah, for some reason, Fusion and Super Metroid just never felt responsive with the wall jump for me. I'm trying to get a missile and it just doesn't seem to work. Yeah, I'll get to it later. Okay. Okay, let me see. Uh, second best Nicktoon of the 2000s after Avatar. Uh, second best Nicktoon, eh? It's a really good question. What is the second best Nicktoon? I'll definitely have to think that over because, um, I mean, a lot of people would probably say maybe Danny Phantom, uh, but. Yeah, I'll definitely need to rethink that. There we go. Ah, that was a oh, that's a nice boost right there. Don't get that very often. Have I seen the anime Hamtaro? No. That was like when did that show came out? I think it was like airing around like the late 90s or early 2000s, but no, I've never seen the show. I did see like little clips of Hamtaro like on AMVs, but Never seen the show. Have I been keeping track on how the Manic Expression movie is working out? Um, well, I have been hearing, you know, messages here and there, but I haven't heard of anything for a while. So, yeah, I don't really know, uh, but we'll just have to see what happens. I know that we hit a bit of a snag um, when... Uh, James, uh, the, the founder of Manic Expression, announced that um, one of our animators has left the project, and now we're looking for another one. But as of right now, I, I haven't heard anything yet. Hopefully we'll find another one real soon. Ken was right. Patricia should bring back an As Told by Ginger movie. <laughs> That's very, very sweet of you guys, but I think I would be terrible for the job. I mean, maybe I could start a petition, but nobody knows who I am. I mean, 
They probably know me more for Nick Slimecast podcast than Old School Lane, and even so, it, I, I'm barely like, I, I mean, I only have like less than a thousand, two thousand subscribers. That's very sweet of you guys, but I don't know if I would be the right person for the job. But that's very sweet of you guys, I really do appreciate it. And, I mean, if we did bring back the movie, I mean, what would it be about? I mean, personally for me, I would love to see, like, it would be like a midquel. Like, it takes place, like, right after Dr. Dave and Lois's wedding. And then it would be a follow-up leading up to, um, the final episode. Which, if none of you guys have seen the episode because you're following uh, us and we're in between, then I won't spoil it. But yeah, I, I would love to... <coughs> I would love to, you know, see that happen if that were to be a possibility, but... I, I doubt that I would be the right person for the job. Let's see. Hantaro came out in 2002. Okay. So, yeah. that This would have been like when I was in college. I was in my second year of college. So, I was watching anime at the time, but I wasn't watching something like Hantaro. So yeah, I probably wouldn't have seen the show. Maybe I would have seen it, like, in maybe, like, AMVs. But, um, as for, like, a, the, me personally watching it, probably not. Which network do you think Animaniacs reboot should be on? I'm hoping that maybe it'll come out on Netflix, because if it comes out on Netflix, I'm sure there will be so many possibilities with the show. Um, and my phone is dying, so let me just grab my charger real quick. Okay, there we go. Let me just plug this in. Okay, there we go. So yeah, um, oh, okay, ready this. There we go. So yeah, I think that maybe um, it should be on Netflix because they would have so much creative freedom for the show. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it'll be kind of awesome if they were able to pull it off. Okay, there's the pump control unit. Mm. Come on, open it up. Oh, that's right, I need the speed booster, and I can't get that without fighting Saris, right. Okay. Do I like Secret of Nim? Yes, I do. I do like Secret of Nim. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I do like Secret of Nim. I thought it was a really excellent movie. Um, very dark, showing off Don Bluth's amazing animation. Uh, really like the story as well. So yeah, I do like it. Um, as for, like, if it's my favorite Don Bluth movie, um, no, it's not, because I saw Secret of Nim, like, much later on. I didn't see it until, I want to say back in 2010, I didn't see Secret of Nim. So, yeah, I do like the movie, I just don't love it like everybody else does. Uh, let's see, least favorite or favorite, um, Don Bluth movie. Okay, favorite Don Bluth movie would have to be Land Before Time. Least favorite would have to be Troll in Central Park. I know that's a stereotypical thing to say, but it's true. I'm really looking forward to the uh, Dragon's Lair movie. I was one of the many people who um, uh, kickstarted the event. Um, I donated a few dollars, and I'm one of the. I uh, did have a few incentives, including like keeping track on what's going on with the movie. So, really excited about it. 
come on. Ouch. Okay, now time to find fight Ceres. What about American Tail? I also like American Tail, yeah. I, I mentioned that in the, um... Oh, crap. I mentioned that in the, um... Amblimation movie trilogy that I did watch the first one a lot. So yeah, that's also one of my favorite movies. Come on, where are you? There we go. Uh, let's see. Back to the polar bears. I think polar bears are the cutest baby animals ever. What do you think? Yes, I do love polar bears. I think they're cute, especially the babies. And they are freaking adorable. I missed. What a been a perfect shot. Few more shots, this thing will be dead. Come on. There we go. Dead. Oh, I hate fighting in the water. Just one more. There we go. Speaking of Don Bluth, what are my thoughts on Anastasia? I'm actually going to save that thought because I believe it was you, um, Josh, who gave me the uh, request. Or maybe it was somebody else. If it was, I apologize. Um, but it, uh, either it was you or somebody else did request that I take a look at the Fox Animation Movies trilogy. So, if that were to be the case, I will save my discussion and my thoughts on Anastasia for another time. Especially since November is the 20th anniversary of Anastasia. So, I will definitely be sharing my thoughts there. Okay, so yeah, I have to go the other way. Favorite dog breed? Mmm. Uh, black Labradors. Those are my favorite. Um, yours is a tie between Pomeranians and Cavalier King Charles Spanies. Spanies. That's cool. Yeah, mine's is the Black Labrador. I've always wanted a Black Labrador ever since I was a kid. I think that they're really cute. I like that uh, they're also really loyal and playful. So yeah, I would have to say Black Lab. My sister's favorite is the Golden Retriever, which is how she eventually got Riley. If you've seen in, like, Halcyon Days, um, you know, that, you know, she does have a Golden Retriever. There we go. Okay, how do you feel about the Land Before Time movie sequels? Oh, boy. Land Before Time movie sequels. Um, yeah, I do admit that they're not really good. Like, most of them are not really good. Uh, I did even mention this many years ago on the, in the Manic Expression Digression Session podcast that a lot of them are guilty pleasures to me. I only, I've only seen the first six, and then the re remaining ones I've never seen. I've only seen Mars Girl's review on them. So yeah, um, it, it, you know, I guess after six, I didn't really miss out on any of them. So that's good. But yes, I do know about the Land Before Time sequels. 
And yeah, I mean, they try to do like the whole dumbing down the story and then the musical song is like, eh. You know, it's funny because, um, you know, a few years ago, I interviewed Andy, Andy McAfee, and she's the vo the current voice of Sarah in the Land Before Time sequels. Uh, for those who are wondering, uh, you know, Andy is, um, you know, the voice of Phoebe and Hey Arnold and all those kind of all those characters. So yeah, um, yeah, I would just say like a lot of them are guilty, guilty pleasures, but I do know that they're not very good. I haven't seen them in many years. Like I haven't seen them since I owned the VHS tapes of them. I only just was reminded on how weird they were because of Mars Girl's review on them. Let's see. The Land Before Time is the only Don Bluth movie I love. Otherwise, he's overrated. Fair enough. I mean, I guess, you know, for a lot of people, he may be overrated. Um, maybe because, you know, maybe um, maybe a lot of the other movies maybe weren't up to your expectations or taste, but that's perfectly fine. Why do you- why do I think CatDog is overrated? Because everything that CatDog did, all the other Nicktoons previous and afterwards have already done it, and they did it better. Also, I just think that the show can be both really forgettable and pretty mean-spirited. So, yeah, that's why I think it's overrated. I already discussed about it in Nick Slimecast podcast where we talked about, like, underrated and overrated Nickelodeon shows. So if you want to go check that out, then be my guest. I mean, I did actually get a request from somebody who liked CatDog saying that I should do an analysis video on why I think CatDog is overrated, but... I, I don't have any interest in that, like, at least right now. Oh, uh, let's see. Is it overrated? Nick wanted that to be a big hit, but it got canceled after 68 episodes. Um, 68 episodes is pretty good. I mean, sure, it may not be the hit that Nickelodeon wanted, but at least it did, it did, it did have a pretty decent run. I mean, I just didn't- I just thought that, you know, any episodes that it did have, it just- I don't know, it just- it just wasn't really that good, in my opinion. Like, you know, everything that CatDog did, all the other Nicktoons did it better. Like, let's just take for example. Like, I know that a lot of people are gonna hate me on this, but just please hear me out. Okay, let's talk about, um, you know, the concept alone. About these two- about a cat and a dog living together. Ren and Stimpy already did that concept. Oh, what about the fact that they're brothers? Angry Beavers did that, and they did it better, because at least you felt like they were brothers. With CatDog, I never felt that genuine, you know, feeling that they were actually brothers. I just felt like they were, you know, they, they it felt like that they were like two creatures that were forced to be stuck together. And uh, what about the music? Yeah, sorry, but... I do like the music. I mean, the theme song is probably the most catchiest song that CatDog has ever done. But, like, all the other songs, they're okay. But, yeah, when you want to talk about, like, music, um, I think Spongebob did it better. Spongebob has much more memorable songs than CatDog. And as for any episodes, they've either been done in other Nicktoons and done better, or they're just not very interesting. And don't get me started on the holiday specials. The holiday specials on all of the episodes are really weak. Like, the Christmas special is pretty forgettable. The Halloween special is meh. And, um, I'm sure they had a lot of other specials, but I just didn't really care about them. So yeah, that's why I think it's overrated. I mean, you know, a lot of people are probably gonna be, you know, uh, disagreeing with me because I know a lot of people grew up with CatDog, but, you know, just, if you like it, then that's perfectly fine with you. Uh, what do I think of the color purple? Uh, the color purple. I haven't read the book or I, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't really say, so I'm sorry. Oh, you have a, um, a black cloud. That's awesome, Tikkun. Uh, Patricia, you also introduced me to the Angry Beavers. I've been watching some of the episodes yesterday and they've been amazing. Awesome! That's amazing. Thank you so much. Really, I, I'm, again, I'm always appreciative of people who are saying that they got introduced to a show or a movie because of my, you know, discussions. I, I really do appreciate it. it. It really warms my heart knowing that. Okay. There we go. Uh, do you think Cartoon Network is going through the level of badness as Nickelodeon was a few years ago? 
Um, well, at least they still do have a handful of good shows. So it's not like downright awful, but it has been, from what I heard, being oversaturated by all these shows that are trying to be comedic, like Teen Titans Go and Powerpuff Girls and Ben 10. So they're definitely relying a lot on their, you know, previous shows and just remaking them that a lot of people are just not happy with it. But as for like what Nickelodeon was, in which like the only thing that they had for a long time was Avatar and then it took a while for a show to be good. I mean, at least, you know, Cartoon Network still has Steven Universe and they still have um, Gumball. Uh, no, I think Gumball was canceled, but at least they still have um, We Bear Bears. Uh, they, they, they still do have good shows. It's just that, you know, you know, they're relying a lot on their, you know, comedic shows, which is giving them a lot of money and it's giving them a lot of viewers and a lot of people do like it. So, you know, I mean, if you like those shows and that's perfectly fine, I personally have not seen any. Uh, I mean, I did see Teen Titans Go like a few episodes when I was in Orlando about a year ago and my cousin was getting himself ready so we can go to the Megacon. But that's it. And as for like Powerpuff Girls, I think I did see like one episode of it and... I thought it was eh. And as for Ben 10, I have not seen Ben 10 at all. So, yeah, that's basically it. But at least they do have, they still do have good shows. It's not like they had absolutely nothing for like almost a decade. So, it hasn't reached that point yet. Uh, a lot of people saying that Netflix uh, offers the most creative freedom. How do they know that? Probably because that a lot of the shows that Netflix has been delivering on, you can't have on TV. Uh, although, Game of Thrones, I mean, you know, they have some pretty graphic stuff, so... Um, at least there's still some that, some of that, but I think that, you know, with Netflix, they, you know, there are some shows that have been shown there that would have never been on TV. Like, I think we even talked about this in, um the Pewee's Big Holiday podcast, that something like Fuller House would have never been shown on TV. Like, it, it, would have, it wouldn't even have lasted, like, a season, but now they actually are doing, like, a... What is it, like, season two or three? I, I don't know, but... You know, th there are some shows in Netflix that are thriving. Like, Orange is the New Black, and House of Cards, and BoJack Horseman. So, there are some shows that are, you know, thriving very well. Oh, Gumball is still on. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I didn't give up on anime. I mean, I only gave up, like, mostly on anime. Like, when I was in high school and college, I was obsessed with anime. But I'm not anymore. I do like it, though. It's just that I pretty much, like, you know, went cold turkey for a while. And then I kind of slowly br brought myself back into it. I haven't seen, like, a new anime in a while up until that point. But I did see, like, A Lull in the Sea um, about... I would say like almost two years ago, I think, or maybe over over a year ago. And I have been catching bits and pieces of Dragon Ball Super. But as for like a new anime, like, you know, like One Punch Man or My Hero Academia or anything like that, I haven't seen yet. So yeah, I really do need to catch up on it. But I, I didn't say like I quit on anime, but I just am not like obsessed with it like I used to be. Okay, see you later, Tikkun. Do you think all grown up would be hated as much if Rograds didn't exist? Hmm. I mean, if if I, I don't know. I mean, if I, I mean, I think to it myself that you know, the, I think one of the reasons that all grown up didn't really appeal to a lot of people who grew up with Rugrats was that you know, I, I guess I, I think that one of the major complaints was that the characters didn't act like the babies that they grew up with. Like you know, Tommy liked films, and you know, Phil and Lil wanted to be their own separate um, you know people, and Dill is a weirdo and stuff like that. It's like. I think that Clint from the Rise and Fall of Nickelodeon said this best, that maybe they should have um, introduced them as like maybe like little kids so it wouldn't have been as awkward. Mm, but I think that in my personal opinion, I think that, you know, if they did try to, um, you know, do the next Slice of Life cartoon, I think that As Told by Ginger did it better because at least it took a lot of risks. But as for, like, all grown up, it, um, didn't really pull as much. Okay, I have to run to get that, okay. Oh, jump too soon. Again, uh, do I like Mystery Science Theater 3000? Yes, I do love that show. I did, um, a Manic Expression Digression session of it a few years ago. 
so yeah, I, I do love the show, and um, I did hear some really good reviews on the um, uh, on the remake of it, or the reboot. So, I'm really excited about it. And uh, one of the people that I had on the podcast, Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, she's also been one of the many contributors for Rift Tracks. So, you know, that's pretty awesome. Although a lot of people say that Mystery Science Theater shouldn't, you know, the reboot shouldn't even happen because we already have Rift Tracks. But... You know, I think it's pretty cool that they brought it back. I mean, you, you know. So yeah, I do love the show. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know, like, you know, the quotes verbatim like a lot of other people do. But yeah, I do love the show. Probably my favorite is The Band of Manos. Because it actually made a movie that was un completely unwatchable, actually watchable. So, it's a miracle. Uh, what do I think of Kung Fu Panda Legend of Awesomeness? Um, haven't seen the show in a while, but I do recall that um, it was a standard, you know, cartoon that was trying to be like a movie tie-in. Although I think it, I think I do recall when I watched it a few years ago that it could have been better. Like they could have really expanded the lore, but um, I thought it was okay. I mean, you know, both Kung Fu Panda and um, Penguins of Madagascar, I thought they were okay, from what I remember. I haven't seen the shows in a while. Okay. Uh, let's see, thank you for introducing me to Caitlin's Way. You're very welcome. I am planning on doing a review on Caitlin's Way in the future. I don't know when, but I want to do one. But it's just that I need to work on these other projects. Uh, if you did, if you guys didn't uh, listen to the, um, uh, you know, the update in, that I did for the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast episode about the rejected Nicktoons pilots, uh, the next thing I am working on is the uh, from pilot to final product to Wild and Crazy Kids, and then afterwards, I do need to work on. Um, you know, the videos uh, that I wanted to, you know, do for um, Hey Arnold Month. I want to complete those once and for all. So the first one I will be working on is the analysis video on Arnold's Christmas. Which, I know, it's not Christmas, but I, I want to finish it. I'll probably do what Mars Girl did, in which I'll release it in, hopefully, in July. You know, Christmas in July, haha, -ha, because I'm clever. And then the other one, I'm not going to reveal what it is, but... I've been putting a lot of work into it, and I just want to say that phase one is complete, and phase two is the writing process, and hopefully, you know, that'll go really well. Okay, think fast or make the grade. Um, I will probably have to say, ugh, both of them are awful. I mean, you know, the first one, it has, like, an, either an annoying host, but a convoluted game show. Or you have a completely boring host with a generic game show. It's like, what do you want? Do you want a boring or annoying host with a convoluted game show? Or do you want a boring host with just a Jeopardy clone? Ugh, decisions, decisions. Ugh. I have no idea. And I'm all into missiles. I don't know. If I have to choose one, I, at least I'll probably pick Think Fast because at least Think Fast will be at least laughably entertaining in a stupid way. At least with Make the Great, I'll be bored out of my mind. Okay. Doug's Disney December for this year will be Disney Channel Original Movies. Oh, no. I wish him the best of luck. What is my favorite? Um, to be quite honest, I didn't really grow up with any of the Disney Channel Original Movies. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people, they want me to do reviews on it. Like, what is your thoughts on Halloween Town? What are your thoughts on Cadet Kelly? It's like, I've never seen any of them. So, yeah, I can't really say. And, uh... 
But other than that, I mean, you know, I, the only ones that I do recall seeing was when I was in college and I was a camp counselor, everybody couldn't stop talking about High School Musical. And I was like, help me. Because I just hated High School Musical. I just didn't get the appeal. I mean, I th the songs were catchy, but the story was just so... Eh, and the characters were just so generic. And they made three of them. That's the sad part. Ouch, and I'm dead. Have I seen Phantom Strider's top ten best and worst Nickelodeon shows? No, I have not. Uh, let's see. <coughs> um, let's see, worst Disney Channel show. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Hold up. Oh no! I thought I saved already. I have to do that all over again. Oh no! That sucks. Okay, where's Disney Channel show? I might as well think that over before I start crying. Um, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of Disney Channel shows to state my opinion. Uh, Blizzard Vark. Never even heard of it. That's a really unusual name, by the way. It's a ripoff of iCarly? Oh my god, they must be really desperate if they want to rip off iCarly of all things. Do I like the Bratz? No! No, 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 no. Absolutely not. That was way after my time, and my cousin, one of my cousins, loved the Bratz, and I just thought it was basically a sluttier version of Barbie, so no. I do not like Bratz. Never liked the toys, and... It just never really appealed to me, so no. They're making another high school musical movie. Really? Oh boy. I wish them the best of luck on that. Because when was the last one? Like 10 years ago at this point? So, man, they're really bringing things back sooner than later. Uh, favorite DreamWorks movie? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it'll probably have to be a tie. Let's see. I, I think... Uh, I don't know what my favorite is. Because I really like a lot of them. Um... Let's see. I, I do like Ants. I do like The Prince of Egypt. I like the two... For, I like the first two Shrek movies. Um... I really also like... Um, I like Kung Fu Panda... Uh, the first two. Haven't seen the third one. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon was also a really good one. Haven't seen the second one yet. Okay, I think this is the save room. No, it's not. But I need some health anyway. Um, I think those are the, I, I, I think the other ones I haven't seen, and if I have, I don't, rem I don't really remember them. I, I, I did see the Madagascar movies, I saw all three of them, and I thought they were pretty cute. I mean, I can't say that any of them were my favorite, but I thought they were pretty good. lower. There we go. 
Uh, let's see. Last question before I go. Would you watch ten episodes of Cousin Skeeter or one episode of Fanboy and Chum Chum? Ugh. Wow. Must you put me into torture? Uh... At least, I mean, if, when you say one episode of Fanboy and Chum Chum, I, I do know that Fanboy and Chum Chum is like an 11 minute episode. Do you mean by that? Because I'll watch that because at least it'll be quicker. At least the torture will be quicker. Or do you mean by like one full episode of Fanboy and Chum Chum? Because both of them I hate. I heard the new High School Musical is a reboot. A reboot already? I mean, it's too soon in my opinion. But I guess they want to capitalize it because it already it's nostalgic for a lot of people, so... Great. Not great. Okay, the first two high school musicals were somewhat enjoyable, especially the musical numbers. I, at least I can say that. At least the musical numbers are enjoyable, I do admit. And the dancing choreography is pretty cool. I just can't stand the stories. And I just find the characters to be so blasé. At least I, I at least the, the musical numbers, I can say, are pretty cool. As for everything else, it's just... Eh, don't really like them. Okay, uh, one full episode of Fanboy Chum Chum. Okay. I'll take the one, but then again, it's so erratic and all over the place, and at least with Cousin Skeeter, it's both bland and annoying, and it's trying to be, like, so hard to be, like, a ripoff of Keenan and Kel. So, yeah, I... I don't know. Alright, I got the super missile, but I'm so gonna be dead. Okay, which movie came out first? The Wild or Madagascar? I think the- I think Madagascar came out first, from what I remember. I think The Wild came out a year after Madagascar, or from what I remember? I don't remember. But I think it- I think it came out. Oh, yay! SAX strikes again. And yes, there's a save room. Please let it work this time. Okay, yeah. Madagascar came out in May 2005, Wild April 2006. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was right. It did come out. Okay, the That's All Raven sequel is too soon too. The show ended 11 years ago. Did Raven have kids at 18 or something? Could be possibility. I mean, although if that were to be the case, I mean, the kids would be like what? Like, a lot younger or older? I don't know. Yeah, it's just weird. Okay. Okay, see you later, Pocketbook. Thank you for joining. Do I like the Wonder Years? Yes, I do like the Wonder Years. I remember when I first saw this show, I thought it was uh, pretty cool. Uh, I do remember that... Um, I remember reading it in Cassine Gaines's book... That they wanted to have um, Gene Shepard, the one who, um, you know, uh, he was the radio host and he was the one who, uh, his story, uh, would, would they eventually adapted from uh, a Christmas story. And they wanted him to be the narrator because they were heavily inspired by the narration of a Christmas story to do the Wonder Years, but he turned it down. And so that's how they got um, Daniel Stern to be the voice of Kevin in his older years. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, I know there's supposed to be a boss here. Where are you, boss? I want my anime Cory in the house to have its own sequel. Ugh! I don't get that joke. I'm sorry. I don't get that joke. What is the deal with Cory in the house is the best anime ever? I, I, I really don't understand the joke. Seriously, what does it mean? I mean, it's, I mean, I remember when that show came out. It was like what many people considered to be like one of the worst spin-offs ever. Is the show so bad that they're now making it a joke? It's like, oh, it's an anime? Seriously, I don't get it. There it is.
boss time. Here we go. Oh god, if Tom was here, he'll probably say, Look, Patricia, it's a crab. It's like, no, it's not a crab, Tom. Seriously. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, I did a lot. I did a let's play of Me of Metroid Fusion a few years ago over at the Let's Play channel, and all they were saying was like I was fighting a mechanical crab, which I was like, guys, please don't joke like that. But seriously, it was pretty fun. And now every time I see this boss. I am fighting a mechanical crab. That's all I can see from it now. So thanks, Tom and Tristan and Nick, for ruining my see of my, you know, perspective of this boss. They're they're probably not even watching this. Seriously, the the bre it sounds like Darth Vader breathing in there. I doubt that he's in a mechanical crab robot thing. Come on, get in there. Come on, explode already. Thank you. Okay, do I like Hannah Montana? No, no, I do not. That was another show that a lot of my, um, a lot of the kids from um, the camp that I was a camp counselor to were obsessed of. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, it was just so. Like, I hear that CD every single day. I mean, I, I especially you had this kid who danced to Nobody's Perfect. Oh my god, that song was stuck in my head for months, and I'm like, I hate this generation of kids watching these shows. It's so awful. But I'm glad that they actually see it as the pure trash that it is. Uh, at least for me, that song was just cancer. Uh, let's see. There's also a video from 2008 called Top 10 Anime Boobs. And it fo showed footage of Cory in the ha house and Phil of the future? What? Okay. Wh wh I mean, what does that have to do with what? <sighs> I don't get people. I really don't. People, people are just so weird. Either that or they have way too much time on their hands. Oh crap, gotta go, gotta go. Ah! Okay, I think this is the exit. Yes, it is. Now I just need to go through the exit, and I'll be out of here. Oh. Okay. Take my time. Go very slow. Okay, I made it. Did you know that C.H. Greenblatt, the creator of Chowder and Hardy Harvey Beaks, worked as a writer for SpongeBob? Yes, I do. Yes, I do know he, wor he worked as a writer for SpongeBob. Ever since I was little, I saw Sharpay from High School Musical as a witch. Interesting. I never thought about that. I mean, I do know that she did have, like, a really out-there personality, but I didn't think of her as a witch. Uh, let's see. Unfabulous or Angela Anaconda? Ugh. I have to say Unfabulous, because even though that show is generic, it's not as a massive... Just a massive, awful show as Angela Anaconda. So I'll probably have to say Unfabulous if you really put a gun to my head. What do I think of the Proud Family? I do like the Proud Family. I remember seeing the first season of the show, and I did really like it. I, I even, which is pretty sad when I did my video on the Proud Family, and I, it didn't get a lot of views. What I, what, you know, compared to what I thought I would get. 
as of right now, my my discussion about the of uh, the Proud Family's Black History Month only got like two thousand views, which uh, it didn't. It wasn't a ma it wasn't a major success, but I did enjoy doing that video. They want me to. They, uh, there was somebody who requested that they wanted me to do a video on the episode where Penny goes over to the Muslim family, and there was like a massive amount of controversy when Penny was staying over there. But I am. Just, I will be discussing about the Prod family again in, in December because I'm going to be doing a comparison video. I'm going to be comparing the Proud Family Kwanzaa special to Rugrats Kwanzaa special. So I will be doing it another episode of the Proud Family. So stay tuned for that because that was another episode that left a massive impact on me. Uh oh. Plot time. Does Samus suspect anything? No, I do not think so. Good. Monitor her closely. Affirmative. Out. Ooh, now the plot thickens. Okay, the last Harvey Beaks episode will air in July in Africa. Meanwhile, America still has nine episodes left to air. Yeah, let's just hope it doesn't turn into another As Told by Ginger incident in which it'll take another 12 years for them to air the episode in another channel. Okay. Yeah, thank you, No Parking Barry. I do agree that this... Cory in the house is the best anime ever. It's like, I don't, it's stupid. I really don't understand. Seriously, I really don't understand memes. Maybe I'm just old, but I just don't get it. Yes, I did find out why my Nick Smithel video on the Proud Family got a lot of hate. It's because of two reasons. It wasn't a Proud Family episode, and also because apparently I shouldn't know about the show because I'm not black. So, there you go. That's an interesting reason. So, yeah, that's why it got a lot of hate. Which is why it's one of the few episodes of the podcast that I had to um, remove the, um, the comments and uh, disable the like and dislike buttons. So, you, can, you can't please everybody, you know? Yeah, exactly. A lot. Uh, thank you, no parking barrier. Exactly. A lot of people mistook it for an actual episode, even though it says next missile three. No, next missile two episode whatever. The proud family. It's not like the proud family episode whatever in this episode. So, yeah, I just don't get it. Uh, yeah, Josh, uh, I did answer the question regarding about the mighty bee, and I don't really care for it. So, yeah, sorry. Okay, so now I have to watch over an ice form of the X parasite. I can't touch it because I will freeze to death. So I have to be really, really careful. Okay, run. Run, 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 run. run. Go away. Run, 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 run. No. Ow, 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 ow. Oh wow, that took a lot of damage. Nope. Nope. Not not good. Not good. Nope. Ow. Big, big mistake. Uh, Patricia, I have a great idea on what comparisons you should do on two particular shows. May I email you? OldSchoolLane86 at gmail.com. You can email me there, and uh, let's see if I would uh, accept it. Right now, I'm pretty preoccupied with my stuff, but I'm always open to requests. So, yeah, let me know. Ah! Oh, this is not good. Go away. I don't want to die. Ah, oh, damn, I'm dead. Okay, do you think Teen Titans Go will last on forever Spongebob and The Simpsons? I hope not. <sighs> we'll just have to see. I mean, right now they're pulling in a lot of views and kids really like it, so I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping not either. 
What do I like better? Fox Kids, Kids WB, or Disney's One Saturday Morning? Um, I do like them all for different reasons. I remember when I was watching Fox Kids, they used to air like Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series and X-Men the Animated Series and Spider-Man the Animated Series. I did watch a lot of superhero programs. So yeah, I did watch those. As for, you know, Kids WB, I did watch a lot of the, you know, the reruns of, um, you know, the, um, you know, the Kids WB program, like the, you know, like uh, Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain and Freakazoid. So I, I, I watched those. And as for Disney's One Saturday Morning, I did see a lot of like Recess and Pepper Ann. So yeah, I, I do like them for different reasons. Uh, gotta go watch Secret of Nim with my family. See you later. Okay, thank you so much for the end for joining. Oh, uh, you'll do that later. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I, exactly, Nasaria. I hope that it doesn't last forever either. Run, 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 ouch. That hurt. Okay, I'm not gonna blow up that block again. Okay, let's do this one this time. Ouch. Oh, that took a lot of damage. Ah, that did a lot of damage too. Okay, run, 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 run. Get in. Come on, give me health. I need the health. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Hey, Toon Wrecker, thank you for joining. What do you think is the most overrated Nickelodeon show ever? Hmm. Well, I, I already mentioned Cat Dog, and I already mentioned about, like, all the, you know, most of the programs from Dan Schneider. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I mean, I don't, I can't think of anything else at the moment. I, mean, I guess those would be the only ones I can think of. Ah, oh, yes. Hello, E Tank, my old friend. Okay. Uh oh, here comes the SEX. Which nostalgia critic moment did I laugh the hardest? Hmm. Wait. Wait until she's gone. Is she gone? Okay, I don't want to get too close because I'm not in the mood to fight her. I think she's gone. Yes, she's gone. Uh, let's see. I think when he did his, um, what you call it? When he did his Battlefield Earth video and he was saying, like, he had that stupid rant, I was just, like, so amazed about how incredibly over the top it was. There's probably a bunch of others. Uh, let's see if I can think of another one. Obviously the bad credit card one, that's also pretty funny as well. Although, Batman wasn't the one who did the bad credit card. I mean, first, anyway. If any of you guys remember the David Letterman show, like, from the 80s, and... Uh, Pee-wee was dressed like the devil, and he actually had a back credit card. So he was the one who did it first, not Batman and Robin. So, yeah. Oh, crap. Get away! Ow! That hurt. Okay, let's see. 
best and worst Nickelodeon theme songs. I did a list of that a few years ago, and man, do I need to redo that because it's so outdated. Let's see. Like, my favorite live action is Pete and Pete. My favorite animated is just Hoba Ginger. The worst. Like, I think I said that it was... Um, like, this was before... Yay, it's destroyed. I think this was before Fanboy... And, I think this was around the time that Fanboy and Chum Chum came out. B -b before Breadwinners. But I think that the worst one still is... Uh, the Brothers Flub. That's still the worst. Although, you know, shows like But Ugly Martians and Breadwinners are starting to take it... Um, it's that for its, you know... Uh, you know, I'm not sorry. Uh, you know, fam. Uh, I think it was like I said that um, it was um, Brothers Flub was worse, and I said that But Ugly Martians was a close second. But nowadays, I think Fanboy and Chum Chum and um, Breadwinners are going to take it. You know, it's, it's, it's on a run for its money. But I do need to redo that list again at some point. But I still do hold hardly, uh, still have Pete and Pete and Asoba Ginger as my favorites. There we go. It's destroyed. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for emailing the idea. I'll definitely read it when I'm not busy. Yay! Hooray! I got... Uh, I got the Varia suit. Yay! Wings Club. Never seen it. The way after my time. Favorite Nicktoon villain. Uh. Oh, yes. Give me your ice particles. Mmm, so delicious. Um, uh, oh yeah, um, probably my favorite would have to be, um, um, probably Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender because, um, uh, I really do love her complexity and I do love that she, even though she's like really powerful, she does have like a really sad backstory. So I'll probably say Azula. Okay, where are you, item? No, you're here somewhere. Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, all hail Plankton. Oh, Plankton is a fun villain too. Uh, but you know, if I wanted like a more, co if you're talking about like a complex villain, uh, I'll probably say Azula. But Plankton's pretty fun too. And I do love the fact that the X parasite know that it'll be absorbed uh, as opposed to before in which it wasn't. So I do like the fact that it now it's running away. Run away and cower, for I will absorb you all. Wah. <laughs> okay, um. Unpopular opinion, I love the four kids Winx Club dub over the official one, mostly because the voice actors in the official one are bad and the four kids one had an ending rather than continuing aimlessly. 
Uh, when you're referring to like original voice acting, are you talking about like from the Japanese version or did they do a different dub? And um, it wouldn't be surprising that, um, you know, that, you know, eventually like four kids would like only have like a, like the rights to maybe a handful of seasons and then they wouldn't show like the true ending. They did the same thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX in which, um, the, the, the final season was never dubbed. So the only way you can be able to see it is if you watch it in Japanese. Uh, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go up. What am I doing? I'm not paying attention, that's why. Oh, the original was in Italian. There was a different English dub, and it's the show's from Italy. Okay. So it was the Italian dub, which was the original dub. Okay. Okay, now I understand what you're talking about. I can't find the Italian version anywhere online. Hmm. I've, uh, yeah, I didn't know about that. That's actually really interesting. It's actually funny because, um... A show that I've never grown up with, but my cousin did when we went over to Megacon. Uh, Winx, not no Winx, um, Totally Spies. Uh, when we were at um, Megacon last week, I went to a Totally Spies reunion panel, and I've never seen the show, but my cousin did, and uh, she really loved the show, and she also had a she had a blast listening to, you know, the um, the cast talk about stories about the show and stuff like that. So that was fun. Makes me really interested in watching Totally Spies. Even though I've never seen the show. Is there anything here? Oh, Powerbomb. Of course. Uh, Spongebob movie 1 or 2. Never seen the second one, so I'll probably have to say the first one. Definitely has a lot of uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure vibes, if you take a look into it, like... You know, them having to travel to another town. There's a scene over at the bar where it involves with dancing. Even the poster is, you know, has the same slogan. Well, a similar slogan to, um, uh, to Big Top Pee Wee. Instead of, like, he uh, hero, adventurer, or something like that, it's... Yeah, I definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, but... Yeah, uh, I'll probably have to say the first one. Oh, crap! Sentient Missile! Okay, I've seen the plots of season 5, 6, and 7, and they look bad. I like the season 3 ending more. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, maybe it's very similar to, like, maybe season three was supposed to be the finale, but then they wanted to continue the show, and so that's why they added the additional seasons, because maybe it was getting popular or something, so, if that's the case, then, yeah, um, I'm pretty sad that it didn't turn out as well as it, you know, should have, at least, if, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case, I don't know, personally. I uh, like the second one, with the exception of the CGI, well, that's to be expected, I think, you know, there's a lot of kids' movies nowadays have to have CGI. It's like a, it's like the rule instead of the exception. It's kind of sad, but you know, I mean, if it's if it's done well, then I don't, I don't worry too much about it. But if it's overused, then yeah, I, I would have personal problems with it. At least for this decade, 2016 was awesome for the Nicktoons. I do agree. Last year was great because the celebration of Nick's 25th anniversary, and then the Loud House aired, so yeah, it was pretty awesome. I do agree, no parking berry. So it was 2015 with Wonder Quest. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I still get requests from people wanting me to watch Wonder Quest. I still haven't seen it, so I definitely do want to check it out. Uh, least favorite Nickelodeon animated theme song. I know it probably wouldn't count because it's not technically a Nickelodeon show, but it did air on Nickelodeon. This was before the Nicktoons Network, so I'm probably going to have to say The Brothers Flub. That show is so annoying. Like, really, really annoying. But if it's like an actual Nicktoon, then it'll probably have to be either Fanboy and Chum Chum or Breadwinners. There we go. I'm done with this level. I can get out of here. <sighs> but yeah, uh, let me know if you guys have any more questions. I'll probably do one more mission, and then afterwards I'm probably going to call it a day.
Okay, how did the X download the various suit data? This doesn't seem to make any sense at all, unless the X have the ability to process data organically. At any rate, you have the various suit data. Now you will be protected from extreme temperatures. Now the SAX will no longer be able to freeze you. But you're still too weak, that thing is still too much for you. You currently have no way of damaging it. Oh, well, yeah, I know that. But my simulations indicate that there is a penetrating weapon like the plasma beam that might work. Uh, let's see. Yes, that would be amazing to have the plasma beam. As for restoring the ice beam functionality, I doubt it. Your current cellular makeup will reject that addition. Therefore, HQ has developed an ice missile upgrade. Yes, I love the ice missile upgrade. As for, I love the fact that they even brought it back for um, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, in which they did uh, have the ice missiles. That was pretty cool. Uh, do I like Tron? Yes, I do like Tron. I do like the original Tron. I thought it was very fascinating when I first saw it. I think I saw it back in, like, high school or something. But I did not see Tron Legacy. I did hear a lot of mixed reviews from people. But I, I did love watching Tron Uprising. That was an amazing show that should have lasted much longer. Uh, let's see. I Double Dare or You Can't Do That on Television? Uh, probably Double Dare. I mean, don't get me wrong, I also do like, well, You Can't Do That on Television, but I've... I personally like Double Dare more. Uh, let's see. What uh, what do I think of the Disney Channel show Brandy and Mis Mr. Whiskers? Never seen it. Uh, what, did I hear about the Roseanne reboot? Yes, I did. I'm just hoping that if they are doing a reboot or if they are continuing from the last season, they have got some explanation to do. Like, you know, that fifth season was just so weird. Like, you know, the fact that apparently at first, like, you know, the the family was rich, but then it turned out to be like a, a story that Roseanne wrote to hide the sadness from the fact that Dan had the heart attack and he didn't live. So yeah, I mean, they have some serious explanation to do. If John Goodman is called back for the reboot, they have to do an explanation on that because, you know, you just basically killed off a character in the last episode. So yeah, I don't know how they're going to do that. Either that or probably they're going to do it again from scratch. But, yeah, I'm kind of curious about that, to be quite honest. Oh, I have to shoot it. Okay. There we go. Okay, thoughts on making fiends? Never seen it. Have I heard of the new Cartoon Network Latin show Villainous? It's reminding people of this other Cartoon Network show, Evil Concarde. No, never seen it. Um, best and worst CGI Nicktoon. Uh, well, the only good one that I... I mean... Let's see. I mean, best CGI Nicktoon. I mean, I guess TMNT would probably be a decent CGI Nicktoon. I mean, I... I, I guess it's CGI or 3D animation. So yeah, I'll probably say that. The worst one... Uh, probably Fanboy and Chum Chum. I confess that sometimes I crave attention as well, not to the crazy extent of Dodie. Oh, you're talking about like- oh! Another person was talking about how they sometimes relate to Dodie. Okay. Um, I guess so. I mean, I do know that a lot of people do relate to Dodie in some ways. Being a little bit eccentric. I mean, that's perfectly fine. I mean, if you take it too far, then, you know, of course that's a different story. Okay, that door's not open yet. I have to find a way to open it. Need to take another round. Okay, can't go there yet. Do I like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends? Yes, I do like the show. Um, I do think that Blue is a little bit too much of a mean-spirited jerk, but I do like the show, yeah. 
I haven't seen the show, like, like the ending of the show, but I do remember seeing the TV movie where Wilt is trying to find his owner. And I thought that was a pretty cute movie. Um, so yeah, um, other than that, no, I have not seen, um, I haven't seen all the episodes. Ah. Okay, let me go somewhere else. Oh, okay, well, never mind then. So I do have to go down there. There we go. Uh, best live action Nickelodeon movie. Hmm. Uh, probably. Uh, probably have to say maybe the Keenan and Kel movie. Uh, I know there's been two of them. But I probably have to say those movies. Oh, I need the speed booster from that one. Damn it. Do I like HR Puffin stuff? HR Puffin stuff was really weird. Oh, now I remember what I have to do. There we go. But the problem is, is that I don't have the speed booster. So I'm gonna get hurt. Uh, but yeah, HR Puffin stuff was really weird from what I remember. Although I do recall that Nickelodeon wanted to re like, you know, air it at one point, which I thought was really interesting of a choice. But yeah, um Okay, save there. But yeah, I haven't seen the show in a while, but I do recall it was really weird. I think I'm almost there. Yes! There it is. The game is Metroid Fusion, the end. It says it right there on the screen. Okay, so yeah, this is a uh, part of Metroid Month, even though that Metroid Month is well, May is already over, but I've been busy for the past couple of weeks and now I'm catching up. Okay. I think 2007, 2009 era wasn't really a dark age, but more of an age of hidden gems. There were good shows, but none of them were popular. Batman, The Brave and the Bull, Secret Saturday, Spectacular Spider-Man, Wolverine, The X-Men, El Tigre, Chowder, and Wayside. Uh, yeah. Uh, Batman, The Brave and the Bull, definitely an overlooked gem. I remember when that show first came out, everybody just hated it because it wasn't a dark, gritty Batman TV show that everybody wanted. And then it did come out and nobody liked it. So, yeah, it's like, what do you want from people, you know? Okay. There we go. The exit's right. The uh, data room's right here. There we go. Now I have the ice missiles. Yay. Um, have okay. I've only uh, wayside. Um, I do remember seeing. 
bits and pieces of Wayside. I haven't seen the entire series as a whole, but from what I recall, I think it was like a show that was based off of a move, uh, based off of a book series that not a lot of people really liked. So for a lot of people, it was kind of disappointing, at least from what I've heard. Okay, let's go up. up, up. There we go. Take that. Uh, I've never read any of the Wayside books. I know it was Lewis Satcher who wrote them, but I never read them. I did read Holes, though. It's funny, because when I was in high school, we read Holes, and there was a contest for who knew the most... Um, you know, who know who knew the most trivia about the book? And the winner was actually gonna get um was actually gonna get like a, a pizza party and they actually got to see the movie. And I they chose me to um be the representative for the contest and I was the one who won the the prize and we ended up seeing the movie while we were um uh, while well, we had the pizza party. So that was pretty cool. There we go. That's how you do it. Holes the movie used to scare me. Really? Um, what scene scared you? Was it the... Um... Yeah, I'd like to know. What, what scene scared you? Um, well, I hate the Thundermints. I'm glad it's more popular than Schneider's current two shows that man needs to retire. Either retire or take a break because it's getting really tired and old. I mean, the same the guy's been doing the same thing over and over again for almost 20 years. He needs a break, man. Eartha Kitt was in Holes. Yes, she was in the movie. She was the um she was kind of like the the um, uh, yeah, I think she was like the woman who was like the the local. Um, she was like the the local um, witch or something like that, and she was the one who places the curse on the Yelnats. So yeah, um, if that was the ski the scene that scared you, then yeah, I don't blame you. She that that scene was pretty terrifying. Okay, how do I get out of here? I think it's this way. No, I was already here before, was I? Um, okay, so if I go through right around here, I'm gonna try to get up myself up the top. Okay. Let me try that again. Take two. Uh, yes, um, yeah, Charlotte LaBeouf was in the movie. Right, you know, this was before he went completely insane. And yes, I did see the Holes movie. I saw it when I was in high school when I entered in the um, the Holes book competition. Um, hello, go in, turn into a giant tower thing. Okay, that was weird. I've never seen that before. Uh, do you recall the I'm blank and you're watching Disney Channel bumpers? Um, I do know about them. Um, so yeah, I do know about them, and I did know that Charlotte LaBeouf was in one of them. That's actually pretty interesting. There we go. Do I like Willy Wonka? Yes, I do like Willy Wonka. I actually have a Charlie Funko figurine that Kevin gave to me for Christmas last- no, not Christmas. It was the last- it was last August when I went to visit him and Christina in New York last- uh, yeah, around last August. So yeah, I do like the movie. Oh, there we go. That's actually how you do it. Okay. Did have to wander around aimlessly. Uh, let's see. Favorite Nickelodeon movie? Uh, okay, if it's based off of the, the Nicktoons or the, um... Or if it's based off of the Nicktoons, I'll probably have to say maybe it's Rugrats in Paris, or probably um, the first SpongeBob movie. 
if it's a, a, a you know like a regular movie in its own right ooh what was that in the shadows ooh scary um but if it's like a regular movie like by itself hmm. probably uh it would probably have to be maybe the um let's see Um, I did like The Adventures of Tintin. That was a pretty fun movie. Uh-oh. Time to go. Okay, I watched it when I was four or five years old because my dare care showed it. And that was the one scene where African-American man and the Caucasian lady were on the boat and he got shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I remember that moment, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty... It was pretty frightening, especially for a Disney movie. <laughs> okay, emergency in section three. Area could melt away soon. The main boiler's cooling unit is malfunctioning. This could easily destroy the entire research station, as it would likely auto-destruct explosives. That's not good. We have about six minutes. Hooray. Don't you love countdown missions? I know I do. Have I seen the Nick film The Electric Piper? No. Although a lot of people have been requesting for me to watch it because it was lost for many years. And now it's back. So, yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. Time to go. So yeah, I, I haven't seen the Electric Piper. Although a lot of people wanted me to cover it, I still haven't seen it yet. All right, time to go. Okay, where to go? Uh, to the right. Do I like Babe and Babe 2? I do like Babe. I have never seen the second one. I think I did hear from a lot of people who did see the second one that it was like a stark contrast to the first movie and they didn't like it as much, but I haven't seen it. But I do like the first movie, yes. Ouch! Ugh. Come on. There we go. Ah! Oh, this is not gonna be good. Uh, favorite Robin Williams movie? Um... Oh, man, that thing's gonna be... Oh, this is so not good. Okay, missiles. There. Uh, favorite Robin Williams movie? Uh, probably it'll have to be either Aladdin or Mrs. Doubtfire. Both of which I saw a lot when I was a kid. Oh, this is so not good.
Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, really? That's not good. Well, there were some continuity errors from the first movie. I didn't like. I thought that the second made movie was really good. Oh, okay. I'll definitely have to see it for myself because I have never seen the movie. Okay. No, I don't think I'm gonna make it. How far am I? Okay, I made it. Good. I'm really, really low on health. Okay, I'm okay now. Come on. Come on. Come on, die. so close um have i ever seen wishology um no that's the only i think that was the one of the very i think that's the only fairly odd parents movie that's not the live action movies well, except for the second one because i did i know the first two ones i did see the third one i never seen but yeah uh i have not seen wishology I have seen Channel Chasers, I have seen Abercatastrophe, I have seen Schools Out, and I think I did see Fairy Idol, but I have never seen Wishology. I did, unfortunately, did see the li the first two live-action Fairly Odd Paris movies, the first one for Curiosity, and the second one because I was doing my top 10 worst Nickelodeon Christmas specials around the same time, and that movie was just awful. So yeah. Okay. Everything's back to normal, so thank god. Hey, Captain Beast Mode, welcome back. Uh, well, okay. Do I like the Simpsons movie? Yeah, I do like the Simpsons movie. I haven't seen it in a while, but I do remember really liking it. There was another animated Friendly Odd Parents movie that aired, aired years after Wishology. It's called Tim Timmy's Secret Wish. Really? What's so secret about it? I mean, seriously, what is so secret about it? I mean, he makes wishes all the time, so... I mean, it's like a, it's like a dirty little secret? Eh? Eh? No. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm, I'm actually curious. Um, oh, hey, Slade, welcome back. Uh, Babe Pig in the City was an absolute snore fest. Oh, that's a shame. I mean, I did hear from some people that it was okay or downright awful, so maybe it's one of those movies that has a mixed opinion for a lot of people, so I don't know. Gotta go for real this time. When will you do this again? Thanks for the fun. Take care. Uh, thank you for joining the end, and next time, um, I don't know. I think I'll maybe either do it either tomorrow or next week because I really need to keep ca um, catch up with my live stream. I was supposed to have this thing done already, but because I was either out of town or I just wasn't able to do it, um, I wasn't able to complete the live streams as quickly as I could have. But yeah, I'll definitely keep you posted on when it's going to be the next live stream, either tomorrow or next week. Excuse me. Um, yeah, let's get out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. Have I ever seen Charlotte's Web? Um, which one are you referring to? Are you referring to the animated one or the live action one? Because I've seen both. And I actually do own the book. So. Oh no. It's sealed again. Hooray. Thank you, SAX. 
uh, yeah, I have seen both of them, and I have, and I do own the book. I owned it since I was a little, uh, since I was a kid. Um, as for like which one's my favorite of the adaptations, I think probably you know besides the book, uh, probably the animated version's my favorite. Uh, I also do like the the live action one. It is a by the numbers retelling of the of Charlotte's Web. Uh, I think it did also. They did, you know, have some things that were close to the book that the animated version didn't do, but then they also added in some things that um, wasn't in the books. So, you know what, it's like, pick your poison on which one is your favorite adaptation. The only one that I've never seen was Charlotte's Web 2. That's the only one I've never seen. And I don't have any interest in watching it. Hey, what's up, Captain Beastman? Welcome back. Um, he wishes everyone was the same age for 50 years so he can keep his fairies? What? I mean, didn't he recall from Channel Chasers that he was eventually going to let go of his fairies and he was going to hold on to them while he still had them and appreciate them? But no, we're not going to do that? Ugh, sounds like a massive disappointment. Okay, Charlotte's Web was my favorite book of all time. I also love ha watching the Hanna Barbera movie and I have fond memories over it. And you think that the author hated... Oh, I didn't know that the author hated the li the animated version. Sounds very similar to Roald Dahl hating the... Um, hating Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Maybe it's kind of like the same thing in which, you know, a lot of people love the adaptation and the people who were involved with the books didn't like it. Maybe, it, but I do like it. I do like the, uh, the animated version. Uh, I watched it a lot when I was a kid. And, um... And it, you know, it does. I mean, sure, it's Hannah Barbera, so it does have that you know limited animation. But I do like it, and I do like the music that was written by the Sherman Brothers. So I do like it, and the live action one is okay too. Uh, you build a tall building out of Legos. Congratulations, you've done something that I can never do. All right, so let's see. Um, I'll probably just go over to this room and then afterwards I'll call it a night. That way I can be able to get some rest for tomorrow or next week. I don't know when I'm going to be posting this. So yeah, I need to go over back to the main hall. There we go. I've seen both two when I was really young. I need to rewatch it. Awesome. I'm sure maybe the next time if you do see both of them, let me know on uh, which one's your favorite. And this is where the SAX was. So let's see what she has left behind. Oh, I need to get the speed booster for that. No problem. Okay. There we go. Got it. Eight floors. Crazy, right? Wow. Eight floors. Good on you, man. That's awesome. This guy built eight floors of, you know, his Lego building. Good job, man. It's awesome. You did something that I could never do. Tune record, what's up? <coughs> uh, let's see. I grew up with Scooby Doo reincarnations, but for some reason, I think I'm the only one that kind of likes Scrappy, kind of finds Scrappy Doo fine. He wasn't a bother to me. Well, no, you're not the only one. If you recall, um, that long haired creepy guy was a special guest on the Scooby Doo podcast. And if you've ever seen his um, review of, of Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo, he said that he actually does like Scrappy Doo. So, yeah, when, you, know, you can go check out his videos if you haven't had the chance yet. Alright, uh, spoiler to me, secret wish is that he wanted to stop people, uh, wanted people to stop aging so he can keep his fairies forever. Yeah, I, I did hear the spoiler, so thank you, No Parking Barry. And you have yourself a good night. Uh, it took only one day. Wow, one day. That's awesome. 
like I said, you know, good job, man. Really, that's really awesome. By the way, I found out the reason why Be Cool Scooby Doo looks like Family Guy is because WB forced producers to use that art style. The producers don't like it and wanted a more cartoony style. Oh, interesting. Okay, I think I need to go a little bit higher. What are your thoughts on the Loud House's theme song? I like it fine. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think it's a pretty catchy theme song. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah, I do like it just fine. Patricia, I would like to draw fan art of you and your in-between podcast. Since I can only draw animals, what animal would you like to be? Oh, wow. That's actually that's actually awesome. I've never had fan art before. Oh, man. I don't know what to say. Um, boy. Um, hmm. It's actually a really good question. Um... Personally, for me, my favorite animal is an otter, or maybe you can just, you know, draw us as, like, you know, seal girls, or maybe for Casey, a seal boy, but I don't know. If you have Twitter, you can definitely ask Casey and Ashley on what animals they would like to be, but, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to draw us as, like, seal girls, then that's fine, or, you know, if you want to draw us, like, individual animals, um, my favorite is an otter, but... Yeah, you can ask Casey and Ashley on what animals they want to be if you're interested. Their Twitter handles are at Casey Robert Reed and the A Wits. So yeah, uh, that would be awesome. I'm really excited to see that. Thank you so much, Animation Man. Um, I like the live action adaptation of Charlotte's Web, but I hate the animated version. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I like both of them for different reasons. So, yeah. Um, I can't say which one is my favorite, but I do like both of them. Although I have to say that the animated version I did grow up with. And I grew up with the book as well. Uh, I can draw good. I love seals. Yeah, seals are awesome. And look, it's the uh, Ectagoons and Dragoras from Super Metroid. They're the ones who taught Samus how to do the Shine Spark and the Wall Jump. Uh, I can, uh, oh, if, if you want to draw a fan art Captain Beast mode, then you're more than happy to. I mean, I would love it. I mean, I've never received fan art, so if you're interested in drawing fan art, then that's fantastic. I mean, if you're interested, that is. Uh, that reminds me of PB&J Otter's Do 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 Dio. Sorry, I um, I mean, I only know about PB&J Arter because Jim Jenkins created that show as well. So I've never seen the show. That was like way after my time. How do I send it? Uh, you can send it to me either via Twitter or um, you can email it to me at oldschoolane86 at gmail.com. Or I have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash oldschoolane. So if you have any of those things, then yeah, just um, let me know. If not, then um, maybe you can just private message me on YouTube or something, and I'll definitely receive it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm done here. Uh, what do I think of Jim Jenkins' other cartoons? Like I said, I mean, I haven't seen them. Um, the only ones that I did see was Doug. So... Um, yeah, I haven't seen the other ones. Okay, so the power bomb is next, I think. 
Um, I think for now, I think I'll probably be done. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna probably be done for the evening. So let me just head over to section five, save, and then afterwards I'll be done for the evening. So if you have any, if you have any other like final questions that you would like to send to me, then please go ahead. You're only a kid though? Okay, that's fine. I mean, if you don't have, like, if you're not old enough for Twitter or Facebook yet, then, like I said before, you can always email it to, you can private message me on YouTube. So, that's a, you know, I can always see it from there. Even though that YouTube is glitching out like crazy. Alright, uh, have a good night, Captain Beast Mode. Alright, um, good night, Dipper723. Uh, do I like fam Family Matters or Full House? Uh, Full House is a little bit cheesy. I mean, it's just really schmulty. I mean, although it, I know it had really good intentions. Uh, Family Matters, it, it was pretty funny, but they really just overused Urkel a lot, like in the later seasons. So I'll probably have to say maybe Family Matters a little bit more than Full House, but... Yeah, I'll probably have to say Family Matters a little bit more. Um, how do I do that? Um, well, you go over to, um, let me see if I can recall it. I just saved. Uh, let me just see if I can double check something. Yeah, let me just double check on my YouTube thing for just a quick second. So yeah, here's what you do. When you go over to YouTube... And uh, I know they changed the, um, the, the the views again, so, you know, do what you want with that. Um, you go over to the uh, channel. And uh, you head over to, um, you know, if you have your own YouTube channel. I think there is a section where you can be able to email the people, and there's the community page. And I think in the community page, you can uh, message me. Yeah, you have, you have the message section right over here. So, yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you email me a question. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that should be it. And, yes, it is an emulator. It is a Visual Boy Advance. Unfortunately, I don't have... Um, I do have a... I still have my Game Boy, but I don't have a Game Boy Advance. And I don't have the, the wires and stuff like that to connect it all. So, yeah, sorry. Um, okay, so I think that should be it. Um, I hope that you guys have yourselves a really good night, and I'll definitely keep you posted if I'm going to do another live stream either tonight or tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, alright. Uh, other than that, yeah, just keep, uh, keep following me on, like, uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, facebook.com slash oldschoollane. Follow me on Twitter at patty underscore b underscore Miranda. Uh, or if you haven't, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep updated with all my stuff. And yeah, tomorrow will be the Samurai Jack podcast that I recorded a few weeks ago. Tuesday will be the We're In Between episode discussing about uh, Summer of Camp Caprice. And um, the next video will be the From Pilot to Final Product on Wild and Crazy Kids. So yeah, I do have a lot of stuff coming along. And yeah, um, awesome. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Um, you have yourselves a wonderful night. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming in, and you have yourselves a really good evening, and take care.